Good afternoon, everybody. It is, um, we'll be setting up this uh, Glow XLR. Being here in Echo, I know. Let's go over a basic one PC streaming setup with GoXLR. We're going to assume that you've downloaded the driver and the app, you've got them installed, and your device is powered up and connected to your computer. So you're going to use the USB cable to connect to your computer and the power, power the thing up. You should be ready to rock. Now we'll make all the other connections. First things first is your XLR connection. It goes right into the XLR input there and goes to your XLR microphone. Right next to that is a line in. Now you can use that for pretty much anything you want that's an external audio source. So it could just be your phone playing music or anything like that that wants to come in in stereo via 3.5 millimeter. If you don't have an XLR mic yet, we've still got you covered. There's a pink mic in jack that will work with a headset and coincidentally can also be connected to the analog headset output of a Yeti mic if you wanted to plug that in before you get an XLR mic. We'll cover that in a different video though. Right next to that pink mic input is your typical headphone output. And you'll actually notice underneath GoXLR is this little channel here. It actually lets you run your headphone cable right under the unit and it comes right out in front of you so you don't have to wrap it around and make it all uncomfortable. Right next to the headphone output is a line output. If you want a copy of your broadcast stream in stereo to go wherever you like, that's the jack you're gonna use. We'll cover that in the two PC setup later on. Lastly, you've got an optical input right here. So if you're sending lasers from your PlayStation or your Xbox, this is where you connect it. That about wraps it up. In the most basic setup you have, I'm gonna take this one away here. You actually just have power, headphones, USB, and your XLR microphone. Pretty simple. So the issue that I'm having is I have USB headphones, so I can't like directly connect these headphones to the Go XLR. So I need to figure out how I can use the Go XLR like audio and put it into my headphones. That's where we're at. It's like somewhere in these videos, so. Be fun. Go XLR and consequently its USB audio <laughs> connection works differently than a lot of things you might have experienced. And that's what like it sounds fine now. I'll keep it like this. There's an echo. Um there's an echo because I am listening to the device for when I Okay, so you can hear the music, right? Bam, bam, bam. When I Problems off. This is done. This is the only reason why we can hear everything. Yeah. Makes it so cool. 
instead of showing up as one device in your computer with several different audio inputs and outputs. So yeah, I, I looked at this video too. It only got me so far though. Puts that a lot of programs can't even access, it shows up as several different devices. So you can see here on my playback tab in my sound devices in Windows, I actually have a chat audio device. This is for voice chat, like Discord or Skype. Game, obviously for your, your games. Music for something like Spotify. Sample is the channel that runs the sampler back and forth between the computer, and you kind of ignore that one. And then there's system, which is a catch-all, and that works when you have a game that won't allow you to pick an audio device. So what I do is I go into Windows, and I set Here's system as my default audio device. I then set chat as my default communications device. Similarly, on the recording tab here, I have the broadcast stream mix. That is the sum of everything happening inside GoXLR when all of the audio devices come together and then get sent out in a broadcast stream in stereo. I also have my chat mic, which you can see I've chosen as my default device, and then the sample channel again that runs the samples back and forth from your computer. The way that that is so cool is that when you actually end up on GoXLR itself, it's like each one of these sliders is its own audio device. And that's how we can separate everything so that you can control your music and your chat and your game and your mic all independently. All right, let's carry on. And there's two more things I'd like to show you in the Windows sound control panel here. The first one pertains to surround sound. Now on the game channel or on the system channel, if you'd like- I don't know why it's like so low quality. Like it's, it's definitely their video. You need to upload, upload a higher resolution <laughs> screen recording. To enable surround sound, it's virtualized surround, but it works great on any stereo headset and will be passed from GoXLR to your headphones. Now, if you've got one of those fancy sets of headphones that has like seven drivers in each ear specifically, this won't be supporting those, but for any virtualized surround sound, this will work. Right click on the audio device you want to enable it for, go to properties, and go all the way over to spatial sound and you can turn on Windows Sonic for headphones. That will turn on 7.1 surround sound, which will give you surround sound from the game. If the game allows you to choose your speaker output, obviously make sure that in the game, you've also chosen 7.1 for your surround sound output. That will get mixed down to a virtualized stereo surround sound for your game. If you have paid for the Dolby Atmos version that comes in Windows, I think it's about 15 or 20 bucks, you can buy it. You can select Dolby Atmos here and it will be processed that same way. So that covers it for surround sound on that tab. Now on the recording tab, something that you may have been doing in the past is monitoring or listening to your audio device in real time uh, if you haven't had the ability to monitor it any other way. And that's on this listen tab here. And there is listen to this device. We absolutely need that unchecked. Do not have that checked. What happens with GoXLR is your mic is plugged right into the unit and the headphones come right out of the unit. So all of the audio processing is done here and the latency is extremely minimal to the point that you won't be able to hear it coming from GoXLR. If this little listen to device is ticked, you're gonna end up getting a doubled up or echoey cut type sound as the sound goes back and forth between the computer and GoXLR twice before it actually ends up coming out to your ears. So definitely turn that off for the chat mic and also for broadcast stream mix. You can see there's another ability to listen here. Definitely turn those off. Uh, especially we've had a couple people have echo and that was the cause of the issue. Okay, let's go on to the next one. See if this, uh, see if they have it in here. Would this affect my headphones at all? If you have been DAC for my headphones, I would be able to. As long as your amp have analog inputs go from GoXLR, you're good. GoXLR to the amp to the headphones. Plug your speakers in the interface. Question. Currently, I use a third party SARDA.
All right, hopefully the next video. We'll have it again. Everything about the way that Go XLR operates is controlled via the app. It doesn't do any processing inside your computer. All of that is done right inside the device, making sure that the workload is on us and not on your gaming PC. However, all of the stuff about where things go and how you control it, that all happens in the application. And it's broken down into three basic areas. Up in the top right corner here, you've got your profile. Oh my gosh, dude. Let's see. Can you use a USB headset with this. <laughs> we found that if you have the Go XLR and a USB headset, that we can get the sound over. Ah, damn it, dude. Put a 3.5 to 3.5 cord from the headset output to the Go XLR in into the inline of the back of your computer. Then use the listen to this device option in the sound settings to redirect sound from 3.5 millimeter line in an output to the USB headset. Use a guide like this. You know, if you're buzzing or feeding, you may need to get a quality sleep isolator and sure to get a quality 3.5. You can if it has a 3 point analog output. If it's USB only, such as wireless or wired USB headsets, then no. Yes, you just buy a 3 millimeter cord and then use the headset output on the mic maybe YouTube's showing and explaining can you link that video and there is I don't have a very long cord though Bella stop crying what's wrong baby are you just waking up, huh? When did you go to sleep? We just passed out together. It's cool that you guys can't hear the dishwasher in the background, though. That's cool. Christopher, what's going on, guys? I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm trying to wrap my head around all this stuff. Might just have to do it the echo way. Until we get a damn. That sucks. You know, I like the wireless headset. I really do. I probably shouldn't have gone live because I should actually focus on this. Oh, still our mini. This is actually be honestly like all you need, unless you want like the sound effects. Ooh, here's Reddit. Can you help me, Christopher? Go to the control panel. Let me know what you want to do first before I like follow any of your steps. If anyone knows what 
All right, those headsets work with the Go XLR. That would be really helpful. Thanks. I know Astros 50s work with it. However, those are kind of expensive. I'm looking for something a little bit cheaper. All wireless headset generally come with some form of a wireless transmitter. Uh, Jason, what's going on, man? Wireless is going to have some delay no matter what. Do I think? All wireless headsets generally come with some form of wireless transmitter. It's a base station with inputs on it. You can take a 3.5 cable actually from the headphone out to the Go XLR in the aux. Or it might be called line in. So I could do it that way. I don't have a very long one right now. Like, this is all I got. You know. I guess it might be able to work. Let's try it. She is for cookie, that's good enough for me. Oh, cookie, 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 start with C. We on, banana, banana, banana. Go XLR, and consequently its USB audio connection, works differently than a lot of things you might have experienced, and that's what makes it so cool. Instead of showing up as one device in your computer with several different audio inputs and outputs that a lot of programs can't even access, it shows up as several different devices. So you can see here on my playback tab in my sound devices in Windows, I actually have a chat at audio device. This is for voice chat, like Discord or Skype. Game obviously for your games. Music for something like Spotify. Sample is all that runs the sampler back and forth between the computer and you kind of ignore that one. And then there's system, which is a catch-all. And that works when you have a game that won't allow you to pick an audio device. So what I do is I go into Windows and I set system as my default audio device. I then set chat as my default communications device. Similarly, on the recording tab here, I remember. Crap. Crap, crap, crap. Where is it? This one? No. Check, check, check. Is there a echo or no? Is there an echo? So I'm hearing it through the microphone, but I don't know if it's projecting on the screen. Every time I talk, you can hear the dishwasher, though. Yep. It's awesome. Funny, yeah, it's working. Uh, no audio. No echo. Okay. okay. Start this one. system. Ample is the channel. Oh. Computer with oh, my God. 
Go XLR and consequently. I'm just testing. Things playing ready now, no. Oh, this, this is freaking out. All right, I'm gonna reset. Oh no. What's the alarm? What's you? What's happening? Hate audio. I hate audio. They need to figure out a solution. So stupid. Literally. things you might have experienced and that's what makes it so cool instead of showing up as one device okay. in a computer with several different audio inputs and outputs that a lot of programs can't even access it shows up as several different devices so you can see here on my playback tab in my sound devices in windows i actually have a chat audio device this is for voice chat like discord or skype games obviously for your games music for something like spotify sample is the channel that runs the sampler back and forth between the computer and you kind of ignore that one and then there's system which is a catch-all and that works when you have a game that won't allow you to pick an audio <laughs> device so what i do is i go into windows and i set system as my default audio device i then set chat as my default communications device similarly on the recording tab here i have the broadcast stream mix that is the sum of everything happening inside GoXLR when all of the audio devices come together and then get sent out in a broadcast cast stream in stereo. I also have my chat mic, which you can see I've chosen as my default device, and then the sample channel again that runs the samples back and forth from your computer. The way that that is so cool is that when you actually end up on GoXLR itself, it's like each one of these sliders is its own audio device, and that's how we can separate everything so that you can control your music and your chat and funny your thanks for the 25 stars by the way all independently all right let's carry on and there's two more things i'd like to show you in the windows sound control panel The first one pertains to surround sound. Now on the game channel or on the system channel, if you'd like to enable surround sound, it's virtualized surround, but it works great on any stereo headset and will be passed from GoXLR to your headphones. If you've got one of those fancy sets of headphones that has like seven drivers in each ear specifically, this won't be supporting those, but for any virtualized surround sound, this will work. Right click on the audio device you want to enable it for, go to properties, and go all the way over to spatial sound, and you can turn on Windows Sonic for headphones. That will turn on 7.1 surround sound, which will give you surround sound from the game. If the game allows you to choose your speaker output, obviously make sure that in the game you've also chosen 7.1 for your surround sound output. That will get. I hate how YouTube works. Where's Go XLR? Why is it not opening? Like buggy. Can't control the gate, so I gotta like be loud. Funny off the bed. All right, man. Take care. I won't open. All right, looks like it's performing a little bit better. Check, 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 check. I think there's actually a video that has us go through all this stuff. I think I might do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Check, 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 check. Hello. Hey. Do I really need to increase the gain? Because, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, yeah. Here and all that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Ah! I'm fine. I'm just dying. Of course, it's gonna wake her up. Alright, so. Can I like turn the mic up a little bit? Yeah, that would probably feel much better. Oh, that's better. Look at this. to only affect me look at that idiot 35 and then it's a good welcome to the live stream good morning chat and welcome uh, hold on 33 just to be safe don't want to blow this out all right commence it yes cool <laughs> Full speed. Okay. So. Mix down to a virtualized stereo surround sound for your game. If you have paid for the Dolby Atmos version that comes in Windows, I think it's about 15 or 20 bucks. You can buy it. You can select Dolby Atmos here and it will be processed that same way. So that covers it for surround sound on that tab. Mm. Now on the recording tab, something that you may have been doing in the past is monitoring or listening to your audio device in real time. Uh, if you haven't had the ability to monitor it any other way. And that's in this listen tab here. And there is listen to this device. We absolutely need that unchecked. Do not have that checked. What happens with Go XLR is your mic is plugged right into the unit and the headphones come right out of the unit. So all of the audio processing is done here and the latency is extremely minimal to the point that you won't be able to hear it coming from Go XLR. If this little listen to device is kicked, you're going to end up getting a doubled up or echoey type sound as the sound goes back and forth between the computer and GoXLR twice before it actually ends up coming out to your ears. So definitely turn that off for the chat mic and also for broadcast screen mix. You can see there's another ability to listen here. Definitely turn those off, uh, especially we've had a couple people have echo and that was the cause of the issue. Okay, let's go on to the next one. I think I can actually go through the video the way that Go XLR now. operates is controlled via the app. It doesn't do any processing inside your computer. All of that is done right inside the device, making sure that the workload is on us and not on your gaming PC. However, all of the stuff about where things go and how you control it, that all happens in the application. And it's broken down into three basic areas. Up in the top right corner here, you've got your pro Go a BC Based like on the stream. Profile area. Yeah, That's where you can create a profile that contains yeah, all the settings that you need. Actually, probably. Yeah, that makes sense. Because when I start adding this new audio, it's probably going to be. What's going to happen is that then you guys are going to hear it also. to do anything you want. So for example, I can just click this button here and everything Fallout 76, bro. changes to a different setup. The levels change, what's assigned to things changes. It all is controllable by me. 
which when I go back, everything right. loads. So now you could do a profile per game or for a podcast versus a live stream of something else. When you're RPing, you might want a whole different set of vocal effects or any of that kind of stuff, different samples loaded up. All of that gets covered by the app, which is really cool. And the profile contains all of that data. Next to the profile tab, you've got a samples tab. That's where you do sample management. Anything you've recorded on the box itself will live inside the recordings and it will be time stamped and dated so that you know when you did what and you can then select it to rename it for something later. Hold up. Anything you've recorded on the box itself will live inside the recordings tab. You've got a samples tab. That's where you do sample management. Anything you've recorded on the box itself will live inside the recordings and it will be time stamped and dated so that you know when you did what and you can then select it to rename it for something later. There's also the ability to go into a file explorer, create folders, bring in all sorts of files from the internet, wherever you find them, if you wanna have samples created somewhere else. Lastly, there's the presets tab, and this handles all of the presets that live in your vocal effects. So you can create new ones here, save them, use them in different profiles, so the, the presets can be dragged individually later on, and we'll get to that later. To the right of the presets tab is your live view of GoXLR. You can't control GoXLR from here, but when I control GoXLR, you can see that it reflects right on the screen there. And as I press buttons or turn knobs or anything like that, it shows up here. It does also do some focusing for you. If I click on one of these channels here, you'll see that it changes to the mixer down below on these tabs. And these are the tabs that you do all of your basic operations with. You start with mic. You select whether or not it's a dynamic or a condenser mic. That turns on phantom power if you need it. You do EQ, compression, gating, de-essing. You've got your mixer. It sets up all of your audio devices. You've got effects, so it controls when you have reverb on here. What reverb is it? What does that reverb sound like? Go to echo. You've got the same thing. What type of echo is it? How loud is it? All those settings can be done in here. Again, for the sampler, we already talked about where samples are. And you'll see as I change to the sampler tab, it changed to the samples tab here so I can manage them. It allows me to record samples, play them back, and manage them. Routing is done right here on this tab. Because we have so many USB audio devices coming in and out of the system, we can very easily determine where audio goes. So we'll cover that in a separate routing video. Lastly, you have your system tab down here where you can do your mic gain setup, you can run through a tutorial, do software updates, all that kind of stuff. Now that we've taken a look at lighting on the other tabs, you'll notice some familiar stuff over on this right-hand side of the screen. You've got the fader, right, which is the slider, as we call it, up and down, like that. Okay, and you've got a bottom color and a top color. Now that's very similar to the left color and right color that we had on the knobs, but it's the what's above the fader position and what's below it. I'm gonna choose the music fader on channel two here to give you the example, because I wanna keep my mic still up at full volume so you can hear it. We can say what's below. Okay, it's gonna be this pinky purple color. Let's put another color above. Let's put the blue color. And now you can see that the room I have left to go is up here, and as I slide up, with my music and down with my music, it fills that in. There's a couple of cool ways that you can adjust this too. You can actually make a gradient out of it. So if you hit gradient, you won't see it on the screen here, but on the actual unit itself, you'll see it's made a gradient between the bluest blue of the top and the most pinky pink at the bottom there. And it does a gradient in between them, which looks really neat. The other mode that you can have for it is a meter mode. And that meter just shows the level of audio input coming in. I'm gonna use the mic to show you this one. So I'm going to put it into meter mode and you'll watch that my fader stays at the same place, but now you'll start seeing the audio levels jump up and down. So here I go. And now my audio levels are jumping up and down here. As I speak, you see them go up. And as I don't speak, they go away. And I can also apply gradient. And so I will apply a gradient to that with say a down. So here I go. And now my audio levels are jumping up and down here. As I speak, you see them go up. And as I don't speak, they go away. And I can also apply gradient. And so I will apply a gradient to that with say a green at the top and a red at the bottom. And then I get this weird orangey color thing going. Let's try blue and light blue. Hey, there we go. You got a cool gradient there, like blue to orange. The meter mode tends to work the best with your mic. Typically music is very compressed, which means it only operates in a very small range. And you might only see it dipping up and down by a couple of little clicks there. Whereas your microphone is much more dynamic and goes up and down. So it's a, a good place to try the meter mode there. 
So that covers the differences in lighting and the little special features uh, on, on this side. side. Now, now we, we go, go to this whole side over here where we have the screen. So let's talk about what we do to set it up. System. There's a few different System. options. System. So right here you've Just got turn it all the view window. You've chosen the channel you want to operate on. Same thing you did when you were doing the settings. And it's highlighted it here. We're working on this one. And we've got a display. So in the preview it says invert display. Well now we can invert it if we want. Which means it gets a black background and everything that was black is white. Everything's white is black. And it flips around. Now, sometimes that looks really cool and sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on... too fast I wish you could like select your color you know that'd be cool I think there's like Hello, 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 hello. What the? I'm gonna finally do this button. Hello, hello. Tonight. Hello. How are you? I wish I could hear this stuff. I wish I could. I don't know if it actually works. There you go, tell me what it is that we are. Oh. <clears throat> On what you're using at the time. I'm going to... Cool. Let's turn the meter off though. Holy crap, am I loud? Uh, there's got to be a way to adjust what I hear. This, this what I want to know. I don't want to be this loud. I mean, I like being able to hear my own voice, but I want to be able to. Like control that volume. That's what I. That's where is that? You know. This is crap. These are the two same shades of red. Apparently, one of them's orange. Maybe I'm colorblind. Is it supposed to be purple? Let's do one that doesn't involve the uh, the mic. So I stop playing with it because I know it's like loud. Um. if he says like the same colors can't or is that why they're that might be why that there's two of each which one made you this one okay I don't know. Um, what was the default settings? Same as this one. Uninvert it. 
It says display number. It has who tends to work the best. with your mic. Typically music is very compressed, which means it only operates in a very small range, and you might only see it dipping up and down by a couple of little clicks there, whereas your microphone is much more dynamic and goes up and down. So it's a good place to try the meter mode there. So that covers the meter mode. Oh yeah, look at the thing going mode down. Love it differences in lighting and little special features uh, on this side. Now we go to this whole side over here where we have the screen. So let's talk about what we do to set it up. There's a few different options. So right here you've got your preview window. You've chosen the channel you want to operate on. Same thing you did when you were doing the settings. And it's highlighted it here. We're working on this one. And we've got a display. So in the preview it says invert display. Well now we can invert it if we want, which means it gets a black background and everything that was black is white, everything's white is black. And it flips around. Now, sometimes that looks really cool and sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on what you're using at the time. I'm going to uninvert it. It says display number. It has channel one, right? So we have channel one here. It's got the one. I kind of don't like that. I'm going to take it away. Now we look at display color and they can be independent. So you see I have one blue one now and three of the pinky ones. You can totally do that if you want. We're going to bring them back in line with each other. Then you have the icon. And when you, you can take the icon away if you want. So you got this little tick box here. I don't want the icon. I just want text. What do I want it to say? I want it to say mic. Well, how big do I want it to be? I want it to be small, medium, or large. Now you can see the mic is large, written right in the middle there. I'm going to actually go away from the text here. Okay? And I'm going to give you an example of like what I would do if I was going to say, put a different logo up here. So now I actually have a blank screen. Imagine that channel one was actually my chat channel. I wanted to get the Discord icon. I wanted to put it right on there. I click on the icon here, and it brings up a little window. These ones are preloaded. But you can actually bring your own files in. So I've gone online and I looked for <laughs> Discord icon black and white. And I found this one. And then I got it to go big and I right clicked it and I went save image as and I saved it to my desktop. And I have literally done nothing fancier than that for finding game logos or anything you want. You could do it with your own logos, you've got stream logos, any of that kind of stuff. Now you can either drag and drop the icon to this window or for me, I'm just going to click it here. And I know I saved it on my desktop. There it is, Discord icon. I'm going to click open. Now I've got the Discord icon there. Now if the if the icon is uh, a different size or a different shape than what we've got over here, you might want to crop it. So you can actually click the crop tool and you can bring things in. This is pretty tight, but I'm going to actually bring in the top and the bottom here so that it's as tight as it can be to the top and bottom of that icon. What that does is it allows me to maximize the space that I'm using in here. Once I'm done, I just hit the little save button here. And now you'll notice this Discord icon is part my whole system here and it will be there stored in this folder you don't have to worry about it you just always have access to it i'm going to click it and pow there you go you've got your discord icon right in the middle um, this alpha thing here is if you have something that has uh, different gradients in it so if you if you brought in a picture that was a bit more complex this was quite a simple icon so we were able to replicate it perfectly on the screen but if you brought in something that was more complex you can actually use the alpha and it's going to fade away the picture based on the levels of um, black and white information that are in there or grayscale information that's in there. Um, or if it's a color image, it'll work on those colors to, to fade them in and out. You can kind of tweak with the alpha to make sure that you can get a picture that is the most legible on the screen. Obviously, the resolution of these things isn't, you know, like a little crazy OLED display. So it does have a limited resolution. And you can use that alpha to get the best out of it that you can. So that will give you your opportunity to put whatever you want onto these uh, onto these screens. And keep in mind, each profile carries its own version of the icons. Uh, so you can use whatever you want on each individual profile. Uh, you can see if, uh, if we load up another profile here, you know, all those icons just change from what they were, including all the colors of the box and stuff as well. There you have it. That's the advanced lighting on the mixer. Let's go over how to set up GoXLR with your voice chat program. I'm going to use Discord in this example, but it works pretty much exactly the same way in Skype or in Mumble or Vent or anything like that that you're using. So we fire into here, we go into our setup. 
Okay, and we go to our voice and video. audio just ain't been gearing up. Alright, let's switch. I'm gonna do it by itself. Um input chat mic output. Chat, yeah, should be good. Check, 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 check. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Mm, no, that should okay. <laughs> Let's go over how to set up GoXLR with your voice chat program. I'm going to use Discord in this example, but it works pretty much exactly the same way in Skype or in Mumble or Vent or anything like that that you're using. So we fire into here, we go into our setup, okay, and we go to our voice and video settings. Now, because I already have GoXLR chat mic and GoXLR chat as my default input and output devices for communications, remember we did that before in the device manager, um, in there, it's already making Discord work properly, but it doesn't allow us to put that onto a chat channel quite yet. What you want to do is go into input device and output device, scroll down here and pick chat mic, okay, and doo -doo -doo -doo. there we go, chat. Okay, so now we have chat and chat. That's the easiest thing you can do in any program, pick chat and then pick chat again, input and output devices. You want your input volume at 100%. And then this has that volume boost thing. We don't want to use any of that. We're going to use it at 100% here. I use voice activity, but you could still use a push to talk if you want to. I also do the automatically determined input sensitivity. Uh, it doesn't seem to have any negative effects on it at all. However, here's some places where you do want to turn some things off, okay? We want none of this stuff to be happening. You do not want echo cancellation, noise suppression, gain control. You do want uh, quality of service high packet priority. That's just something to make sure uh, that Discord is getting the best uh, sampling rate that it can get and that you uh, you end up getting through your router the right, right way. Um, I don't want any attenuation, so I want to turn that off. You can use that if you want. Um, and you can use the whole show a warning when Discord is not detecting audio from your mic, just in case you muted it by accident, you want a stream overlay or something to yell at you. That's a perfectly good way to do it. But that is the way you want to set up Discord. And now when I'm in Discord itself, it's using the chat device. Okay? And when I go to my GoXLR and I have my chat channel here, this is me actually turning up and down the level of the people that I hear on Discord. They still hear me at 100% level. It is no matter, even if my mic gets turned down a little bit here, it's going to go through to the chat at the right level. But this is the people I'm talking to and I can balance them against myself, which works really, really well. And that's about it for how to set up your chat program. Okay. Check, check, check. Why? Oh, that's just showing me. Shuts everything down. Put my mic's on. Turn that off. Go listen to them. Mic's off. Mic's off. I do still. Push to talk. Um. Yeah, it needs it. That just shuts everything down. I wonder if I can repost. Somehow. I tell you what's overrated though. Blue Yeti. Even their little blue mirror kind of sucks. Ugh. Like I have this thing turned to the max and it's still. It has like a mind of its own. See? Alright. Alright, and that's that. It's just more. In the basic mixer.
didn't know it was in between songs. Lol. That hurt. Okay. Video. We talked about how to assign different devices to the various signing apps without an output to a fader. Channels or faders that are here on the screen and on your GoXLR device. That works really well when the program itself has the ability to choose an audio input. For example, Jonas, what's going on? Oh, dang, I got the, uh, I should just pull up the chat on my phone. Dana, how's the sub going? Oh, well. I just turned my wireless headset into wired though, because of the um, aux cable, the grips. Jonas, I like the GoXL so far. I'm going to be getting one. Um, I like just started using it. I know I'm gonna love it. Um, but the setup is kind of like if you don't have the right equipment, it's like kind of difficult to set up. If you don't have like their um, XLR cables, if it's a USB mic, it's kind of more difficult. Like the Blue Yeti, I I, um, I tried to set it up with the Blue Yeti, but it, it can't. It like the um, it just sounded weird. It it didn't sound high quality at all. I actually got a new mic. Um, a new mic to work with it, and then I have this is these are USB headphones, USB wireless Bluetooth headphones, whatever. But um, in order for it to work with the X Go XLR, I need to hook it up to the aux. So no longer is it wireless grips. <coughs> this game here, it, it's it's really easy to set up though, but has an opportunity to choose your audio device. So you simply would pick Go XLR game and then assign game to a fader and you're ready to go. Our device. That works really well when the program itself has the ability to choose an audio input. For example, this game here. Oh, it's because I selected the default there. It's an audio input. For example, this game here has an opportunity to choose your audio device. So you simply would pick Go XLR game and then assign game to a fader and you're ready to go. But many, many programs, some games from the same publisher even, don't have the ability to select an audio device. Uh, things like Spotify as well don't allow you to choose this. So there is a really easy workaround for it that's actually provided right within Windows. So I'm gonna show you how this works. That's cool. Currently, my system audio is on channel four here. And I started up Spotify, I have some music playing, and because uh, system is my default audio device, Spotify is on my system. All right, well I really want it over on music. Now I've chosen channel two music here, and nothing's there, can't do anything with it. So what I need to do is tell Windows to send the Spotify information over to channel two there. And it's really straightforward. So here we go. Go find the little speaker down on your system tray here. And this is going to like solve so much, so much of my audio issues that I've had in the past. Whatever he's about to do. He's going to, so he's got audio, the system, but he wants it in the music. So you're going to send this one over here through Windows. Right click it. It's going to open a menu and you're going to go to open sound settings. That pops open another thing and this is actually sound where you can see I've got my Go XLR as system and I've got my chat mic as my default bro. input device. I go down to the very bottom here and this is Windows 10 I say app volume and device preferences. Give a click on that and now you actually have every single program that's currently running and using audio and a list of the inputs and outputs that you can assign to them. So right here, I have the Spotify, Spotify, and it's set to default, which makes sense. It's coming out system. If I want to move it to music, I literally just go to this window here, drop down to music. Now you'll see it's flipped, and it's come up, and you can see it down here now with music. I actually set that up through Pretzel Rocks, but 
show you guys. That's cool. I can send it to Pretzel. And default because I already have it set up. And now, Spotify is no longer on this fader. Spotify is over here. And now I have the music channel, as you see, named music, with Spotify running on it. And I can mute it, bring it independently. So if I had something else running on my system channel here, now music and Spotify are independent. You do that exact same process for any game. And you can actually do it like right down to the browser level. You can open up Chrome. So for example, uh, here, I'm gonna open up Chrome holy. and I'm gonna go to YouTube and just find like this. Oops. Oh, if you put a uh, if you put a comma in when you mistype something in a uh, demo video, uh, it probably won't actually do what you want it to do, just FYI. Um, so we go like, I don't know, whatever. Uh, YouTube karaoke. Okay, for with or without you. Now. I can actually assign that if I want to. So I've got this uh, with or without you. I want to sing along. I want to do some hard tune or something. I can actually go into that same menu we were in. So it's right here. And once I start playing the audio from the browser here, it's going to pop up that window. Scroll down and you can see YouTube is on Chrome. Okay, so I go default and I'm going to set that again to music. So now I'm going to pause Spotify and bring it up here. Spotify's there. I'm going to pause it. Now I'm going to unpause this YouTube video. We'll move it along a little bit. And you can see it's also on the music fader, which is pretty cool. So you can really redirect anything you want to anywhere you want using that Windows trick. There's one small caveat is that sometimes when we think it's on the Windows side, it will look like it's going to music, but it's actually reverted back to system. So it still says music, but it seems to be going on your system fader. Just move it away to any other input here and then back to music and Windows will grab it again. That's the way that this works. is intended to be used with an XLR microphone. You can use certain USB Sucks. mics, including Blue Yeti. Sucks. The trick is do it. your mic has to have a headphone output on it. We're going to hijack that and use it to power the mic input on GoXLR. So here's how it works. First thing you're going to want to do is actually connect your USB mic to your computer. That's going to power the microphone. We're not going to use it for audio itself. It's just going to provide the power that the microphone needs to operate normally. So I've done that with the blue. I've also set the gain knob on the back to about a quarter. It needs to be a little bit lower than you'd normally use it. And we're going to use the volume knob here as we're adjusting the gain on the mic, because that's actually going to be what's controlling the level going to go XLR. Flip the mic down. You're going to need a 3.5 millimeter cable. So it's just a stereo cable and you're going to plug it into the headphone output of the Yeti. Goes right in the bottom there, flips down like this. And then you're going to take that 3.5 cable and plug it directly into the mic in jack on the back of go xlr now that it's connected you've actually got the mic and the go xlr put together you can then go through the existing setup so you go into system into mic setup here and you're going to ride the game okay to set this into the good level for your product and my mic's gone down a little bit here because the uh, fader goes down when i do the mic setup but that's fine so you're going to set up your gain exactly the same way that you would normally set it. 
But what you're going to do is you're going to use the volume control on the Yeti to make sure if it's going into the loud, the big red badness place, just turn down the headphones volume. So there's a little bit of a balance between the gain on the back and the volume on the front to make sure that your mic sounds really nice and crisp and clear, but isn't going into the overload section there. That is literally it with one last step. You're going to want to go into Windows. I'll close this up here. You're going to want to go into Windows and you're going to want to disable the Yeti as both a playback and as a recording device. So on the playback tab, I can just right click and I can say disable. Okay, now that's not going to kill the power to the mic. Right. It's just going to make sure it doesn't show up. Sampler Let's take basics. a look at the basics of the sampler. The sampler is both a live sampler and a soundboard, which means that you can record something in real time, just like this, just like this, and play it back whenever you want to, or you can actually grab... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Actually something that I want to... So this is actually something that I want to listen to. Oh, yeah. I just keep the mic right here. All right, let's do that. WFPP, the sound. Let's take a look at the basics of the sampler. The sampler is both a live sampler and a soundboard, which means that you can record something in real time, just like this, just like this, and play it back whenever you want to, or you can actually grab something from the internet and put it on one of the buttons. Holy crap. One of the cool technologies Holy that we crap. have in here is a sound... Wait, 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 wait. Say that again. Say that again. Holy crap. Oh my god, dude. What the f did you just say to me? What the f did you just say to me? What the f did you just say to me? What the f did you just say to me? What the f did you just say to me? Dude, I wish I could like make it sound like a girl or something it's really cool though what the did you just say to me i probably do it on all of them too huh that's cool that's cool that's cool what the did you just say to me that's cool what the did you just say to me that's cool that's cool dude this is the best thing ever this is the best thing ever that's cool what the did you just say to me this is the best thing ever I'm changing my daughter. I'm changing my daughter. What the did you just say to me? This is the best thing ever. That's cool. I'm changing my daughter. This is the best thing ever. Did you just say to me? I'm changing my daughter. That's cool. What the this is the best thing ever. Did you just say to me? What the did you just say to me? I'm changing my daughter. That's cool. That's cool. What the f did you just say? <laughs> That's cool. I think he's having a little bit too much fun. I think he's having a little bit too much fun. I'm going to test it on like music or something. Does it work while I have music? Does it work while I have music? Does it work while I have music? Shut the up, mother. I swear to God, I'm just. Shut the up, mother. I swear to God, I'm just. Ooh. We're having fun now, chat. Ooh. So, wait, wait a minute. What was that? What'd you say? <laughs> There's gotta be a way for you to 
can do like different. You can save like a bunch of these, man. Holy crap. That's cool. Leveling algorithm, which means that if you grab samples from all over the place, some are loud and some Every time I cough, I gotta drink my tea. Some are quiet. We actually process them as they come in and make sure that to your ear, they sound the same level, making sure that you don't have any big surprises in terms of volume levels while you're recording. Let's get to the actual buttons. You've got three banks, A, B, and C, and each one of them can carry four samples. Now, obviously I recorded a sample already and you heard me do it, and you can actually see the little waveform that shows up right down here. That is the sample that I just made. Now, I just held down the button, and while I was holding it, I said something. While I was holding it, I said something. While I was holding it, I said something. And you can see that the sample's right there. Basically, here you've got your banks A, B, and C, and then an indication of which button it is. So the top left was my first sample. Top right is the second one that I made, and then you've got bottom left and bottom right, which are currently empty. Now, I can tell that there's something on these sample buttons because they're actually lit up with red. It's a dim red and it will play, it will go brighter when I play it back. While I was holding it, I said something and I know it's playing and you can play more than one at a time. Now, after you've recorded a sample, which coincidentally can actually be sampled through your vocal effects. So basically, however you hear your voice in the headphones at the time that you're recording it is going to be what gets recorded in the sampler, which makes for some really fun opportunities. And in Once this it's corner, recorded, you can see I have this wave weighing 225 I also have pounds. These two little handles that slide back and forth. And I can actually do a little bit of editing just oh, on wow. the length of the sample. So when I play this first sample, we know this is top left, and we know this is my sample. I'm going to play it just like this. So I heard just like this, but there was a little plop at the beginning. Just like this, here it's like a cuckoo, just like this. It just happened to be a bit that I captured at the beginning. I want it to be super accurate, and I want to be able to say just like this, so I can hammer the button and go ju -ju 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 just like this. So watch. Just like this, I've moved this in a bit, and I've cut off that little thump. Just like this, just, 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 just like this. Now that sample is really tight, and I can repeat it like that. So it's a great little quick trimming tool. Now let's talk about how we bring samples in. I've gone on, oh. on onto the line, and I've gotten myself this uh, Peter Griffin sample from Family Guy. And it's right here. I've brought it into my preset library, or to my sample library. So I clicked on this button. I literally have Peter here. You can create folders, so you might want to have one. Hold on. Where are you getting these, bro? I need, I need to know. Is this me? Is this me? We bring samples in. I've gone on, on, onto the line, and I've onto the line. Are you just referring to the internet? The line. I'm actually like looking up the line. Um, type in audio. Yeah. Okay gotten myself this uh, Peter Griffin sample from Family Guy and it's right here I've brought it into my preset library or to my sample library so I clicked on this button I literally have Peter here you can create folders so you might want to have one of you know all Rick and Morty samples or all samples that you made with a friend one day or whatever it is they'll all be in here including every sample you've ever recorded when you were live Okay, so I've got all these samples historically and their their date and time stamped so you'll know where they are and you can go back and go through these, find the ones you like, rename them and probably bring them out of this recorded folder and chuck them in some other kind of keeper folder that we'd use for later. But I'm going to take this Peter one here, okay? It's actually on my list because it's represented in that folder. And I'm going to go down to this empty sample and just drag it right in. Boop. Now see how it said analyzing track for a second? That was because it was normalizing the volume relative to other samples that I've already recorded. So I'm going to take these two handles here because I know that that had a bit of empty space. You can see this little flat line is just empty space. I'm going to bring those in like that, bring them in. And now I'm going to play that sample, which I know now is on the bottom left. I that well, you forgot to flip them off, but... <laughs>
Um, one improvement that I would make is... What the f did you just say to me? Okay. What the f did you just say to me? So, oh my... Why is it like... You need- these need to be more... Precise. Did you just say to me? Did you just say to me? Did you just say to me? The f did you just say to me? Did you Did you just say to me? What the Did you just say to me? What the Did you just say to me? What the Did you just say to me? I wanna know why mine aren't as like okay. only has one. Somehow I'm getting two. How am I getting two? Um hmm. He only has one. I have two. How am I getting two? How am I getting two? How am I getting two? How am I getting? How am I getting? How am I getting two? How am I getting two? How am I getting two? How am I getting? How am I getting? How am I getting two? Dude, we're gonna start rapping right here. Howard, what's going on, man? I think your stream is sticking on repeat. Uh oh, what does that mean? Sticking on repeat. for liking the stream by the way david also is coming in with the like you guys are awesome you guys are awesome okay um uh, how's this uh, other than that nice job that was because it was normalizing the volume relative to other samples that i've already recorded back and go through these find the one samples or and it's, let's talk about how we bring samples in. I've gone on my list because it's formalizing the volume relative to. All right, let's try it a little bit louder. What the f you just say to me? Yeah, dude, it's just it's not that big. What the f you just say to me? What the what the what the what the what the what the what 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 the f you just say to me? That's awesome. What the f you just say to me? You little, you little. See now that there's like a bunch. I think right here is where it is. You can like barely see it. You little. You little. Yes. You can like barely see it though. I wonder how he gets it to where you. You little. The the the, the sound depression is like the amplitude. You can see it better. How can you do that? Ah! You little, 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 you little. I'm having too much fun with this. Albert, what's going on, man? Same phrase over and over. It just messed up again. Other samples that I've already recorded. So I'm going to take these two handles here because I know that that had a bit of empty space you can see this little flat line is just empty space i'm gonna bring those in like that bring them in and now i'm gonna play that sample which i know now is on the bottom left well you forgot to flip them off but uh, other than that nice job right oh i cut off a little bit of nice job at the end there so let's see well you forgot to flip them off but uh, other than that nice job so there we go now i have that sample done now if i wanted to just turn this into something like flip them off i'd try and figure out where flip them off is here flip them off but uh, other than that nice job flip them off Flip them. There we go. Flip them off. But oh, got a bit of the butt there. There we go. Flip them off. There we go. So now I have Peter saying flip them off. Flip them off. Flip them, flip, flip, flip them off. So it's a really good way to be able to just quickly edit the stuff that you're working on and get the samples to do what you want. 
Other than that, it's basically just go to town, use as many as you want. You can actually load in long files here. So if you wanted to load in, say, some music that you would run in the background of maybe a D&D &D encounter, so you start your music up with one sample button here, and then you have maybe some, like, combat effects or, like, a giant, you know, beast roaring or something like that, you could do that on the other sample while the music is still playing back in the background. Really, really cool. Oh, that's cool. Assess that. So I'm going to make a really long sample here just because I want to add other to it. So I'm going to make a really long sample here just because I want to add other to it. Boots, 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 boots. So I'm going to make a really long sample here just because I want to add other to it. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. So I'm going to make a really long sample here just because I want to add other to it. What the f did you say to me, you little? What the f did you say to me, you little? We are having too much fun. We are having too much fun. I'm going to make a really long fun. sample here just because I want to add the other. Did you say to me, you little? <laughs> But then I also gotta remember that it records everything. It's kind of stupid. That's gonna that's gonna add up. Oh, were you setting up a stream deck? No, I have a stream deck. This is a Go XLR. This is like audio stuff. It's actually pretty cool. See, like some music. Why is this little girl still sleeping? It's like one o'clock in the afternoon. All right, she's not getting a nap. No nap today. All right, enough of that crap. All right, enough of that crap. All right, enough of that crap. See, I don't even have to say anymore. All right, enough of that crap. Benjamin, how are you doing? Benjamin, how are you doing? Albert, I swear to <laughs> Albert, I swear to <laughs> Benjamin, how are you doing? Albert, I swear to <laughs> All right, enough of that crap. Benjamin, how are you doing? All right, enough of that crap. Albert, Benjamin, how are you doing? Albert, how are you doing? Albert, how are you doing? crowd here, boys. Three is the crowd here, boys. Three is the crowd here, boys. Doing? That's gotta like. It's cool. You can actually see me doing it right here. It's like when I hold it, I'm recording it. Like you can't actually see that. I hold it, I'm recording it. Like you can't. What the? F did you say to me, you little? All right. See now that it's like pink outlined, it means that I have something recorded in there. What the? F did you say to me, you little? Kenny, how you doing? Thanks for liking the stream, my man. Kenny, how you doing? Thanks for liking the stream, my man. Boom, chicka boom, chicka boom, chicka boom. Kenny, how you doing? Thanks for liking the stream, my man. Hey. Let's talk about lighting. Now you'll notice on the mixer, effects, sampler, and system tabs, there's a settings tab and a lighting tab. Now the lighting tab is there for lighting relative to those different sections. I'm going to start with the effects and the sampler and the system first, and then we'll do a separate video on the mixer because that includes how you set everything up on these screens here. And I want to make sure that we can go over it a little bit more in depth. So let's start at system. If you go to lighting for system, it gives you the easiest way to globally assign all sorts of colors to the unit in these little sections here. So you've got global and I can just push one button here and go from a red unit to orange, to yellow, to green, blue, all those colors can just be cycled through by just hitting global on the lighting tab and just hitting the color you want. Now accents are like the X and the little, um, there are some actual lights inside here. If it were dark enough, you'd see them just bleeding out a little bit from the back and the left and right there. And those are the accent lights. The bleep and the cough button can also be set up with their own colors. So I'll put those in here. So now I've got a, um, a, 
purple button, and I've got a sort of darker purple button here. Pink and purple, I guess you'd call it. Where the hell are my purples? That don't look like purple, it look like pink, bro. Where's my purple at, man? Oh, crap. What the hell was that? Welcome to the dark side. This is the only one that I've... Oh, that's why. It resets it. I thought every time I... Playing some weird music. It moves, it moves things around too. It switches the music and the voice chat. See, like music's right here, voice chat's right there. On this one, it's flipped. So this is just um, the color settings. I'm assuming. Save active. Oops. Oh, I guess this works. Red teal. Is there like a purple one, bro? I need that dark. He has like this really, really cool like dark purple. Look at this. It looks like actual purple, dude. So those are little. Um, there are some actual lights inside here. If it were dark enough, you'd see them just bleeding out a little bit from the back and the left and right there. And the those are the accent lights. The bleep and the cough button can also be set up with their own colors. The hell, are you put now it's be cycled through by shit's illegal in like fifty three states. What? By just hitting global on the lighting tab. Hey. All right. You gonna say anything? Kenny, wow, LMAO. What's going on, man? Rhea with the like. Let's go. And just hitting the color you want. Now, accents are like the X and the little um, there are some actual lights inside here if it were dark enough you'd oh wow there is, it does actually work huh eh. oh, changing this thing too what the I want to know how to like use the dim and stuff, you know? See them just bleeding out a little bit from the back and the left and right there. And those are the accent lights. The bleep and the cough button can also be set up with their own colors. So I'll put those in here. So now I've got. Here, if it were dark enough, you'd see them just bleeding out a little bit. from the back and the left and right there. And those are the accent lights. The bleep and the cough, cough button can also be set up with their own colors. So I'll put those in here. So now I've got a, um, a purple button and I've got a sort of darker purple button here, pink and purple. Trying to figure this out. It's not. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Beep. Oh, crap. Is it going to 
change everything. But looks like football in here. All right, that's cool. Cool, 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 cool. Apparently, that's purple. Like, ooh. It's just dimmed. I think I like it, the this bright color. Cool. I like to call it. So, those are the, the easiest ways, you know, I just, oh, my whole unit just want it to be that color. Boom, you're done. That's the end of it. However, if we go into the sampler, you can actually click on lighting and now you'll see that the sampler is highlighted and we have some different lighting options. You can choose the active and loaded sample and you can choose the inactive option. So for bank A, I'm going to say that every time there's a loaded sample, it's going to turn blue. Okay, so my bank is blue, that's blue, and the color of an, un of, of an inactive sample is dim. Now an empty sample, you can actually assign your own color to. So I could say whenever a sample is empty, I want it to be red. I want it to say, um, or maybe let's say green. I want it to be green. I could record a sample there. Then I want to say that when it's active, it's red, it's used. So now you can see I've got four green buttons saying I don't have any samples there. But if I record a sample, now I have one red button. But if I record a sample that lights up red when it's playing and is red because it's filled. So if I clear it, clear, and then hit that, it goes back to green again. So that's a really cool way of maybe giving yourself a visual indication that things are populated or not. You can also click the apply to all button. So you can see that I have different settings for bank A, B, and C here. If I'm on bank A and I click apply to all, it's gonna now apply those settings to bank B and C as well. And you'll notice that each of the lighting tabs does have some manner of apply to all that you can do. Uh, let's go over to the effects here and we'll take a look there. So we go to lighting as well and you'll see that the preset numbers them themselves here can all be different colors. So if I want preset one is this color, I can go like preset two there, preset three, preset four, just like create a total gong show. There we go, we got a total gong show of colors on there. Now, of course, they're dim when they're not selected. I'll use the right hand, dim when they're not selected. And then as you select them, you'll see the, the color light up more brightly I want them to go through as you go this through them. Section. So if you wanted specific color codes in your own mind, like, hey, purple is megaphone and blue is hard tune or whatever you want to set up for yourself, that can be a good indicator. Then you also, of course, have the apply to all. So if I, if I picked, say, purple here and I hit apply to all, you can see all of a sudden they're all back to purple again. If we go down to the encoders, now encoder just means the knob, okay? There's two different colors that you can choose from include, and also a third one that is the knob color itself. So the left color means anything to the left of the little white indicator. The white indicator is the level at which it's set. So if I put it straight up, that's like halfway, and it's just showing me with the little white dot there that that's what halfway is. So I can say anything below that or to the left of it, I wanna have as light blue. And anything above that, I currently have no color, I can make that purple color. So now as I move the knob around, you can actually see that it fills in with the blue and the purple back and forth as the knob goes up and down. And then I could take the knob color itself and I could say I actually want that to be a dark blue and it fills in these little slots that are on the knob with a different color. And of course I can apply that to all as well if I want to. Same thing goes for the effects. You've got your four different uh, effects buttons, including the overall effects button there. You've got your activated color and you've got your dim color for your off option. Now you could choose color two, which you, so you could say like it's uh, say it's blue when it's on and when it's off, we're gonna choose say purple. And we're gonna go apply to all. So now purple, uh, it's purple when it's off and it's blue when it's on. Okay, so I'm gonna turn all this down here and you can hear it actually happen. You've got effects on, effects on, effects on. turn the echo down and now I've got megaphone is off, megaphone is on. So you could do something similar to what we did in the sampler by making things like So you need to figure out why am I working, working, working. I should be able to hear the only one that works is this one. I don't want to know why.
Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Well, hello. 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 Oh my god, stop it. <laughs> Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> well, I'm on this mess singer because, you know, I'm afraid to hide my identity. Um, you know. All these big farting artists want me to be a certain way and stuff. I just want to be me. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, how do I turn these other ones on, though? Check, check, check. Echo. 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 Gender, 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 gender. This should be the megaphone. I should be able to hear it on my end. Do you guys hear it? Like the megaphone is on, but megaphone. So it should sound like like talking through something that would do like this. Anthony, they still like the stream, by the way. They green for if they're on and red if they're off, or vice versa. However, it makes sense in your. Oh my god. No echo. Let's try. Get a different voice. Hello, everybody. Well, apparently, I'm changing the bend. Gender reveals. I will destroy you. You listen to me now, motherfucker. Listen to me, you little I swear to God. I swear I will destroy you. And all you little earthlings. <laughs> You're not gonna make me do it, are you? You're gonna make me do it, aren't you? Alright. You pissed me off now. You wanna mess with the dark side? You wanna mess with the dark side? Oh, I'm on this mess singer because, um, <laughs> it's like the only time we're going to be able to do this, so. Just enjoying it, fellas. Oh, yes. Yes. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome to the dark And now at you live from the Lobo Streaming Studios, more numerous cooking Johnson. Are you sure you want to? Hold on. Reverb, what does this do? Mm. Whoa, hello. Are you sure you want to listen to the dark side? Welcome. want you. Oh, yes. Well, hello. Oh, man. <laughs> this is too much. But I'm gonna somehow these these ones aren't working. Megaphone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Robot. Robot, hard tuned, megaphone. Thing. I don't know. I don't know how. 
what am I supposed to do? <clears throat> All right, I like those as a brighter color. Configuring voice effects. There we go. YouTube TV. Try it free. I think one of the first things I'm gonna print. Take a look at the basics of the voice effects. We're going to start with the biggest button because it's the most important one. The FX button here is your effects on and off. Now I have everything turned to nothing right now, so I can actually turn that button on and off with no effect whatsoever on my voice. See, I can't like see it. it. Needs to be tilted like this. Well, then, I guess we'll just see. Are you sure you want to go down this road, puny human? Well, what do you think? I think we're gonna go with the uh, teal. Teal harness. Harness. Understand me. I I didn't want to do that, but you know, just sometimes it has to come on, you know. Mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check. I wonder. So I do watch the Mass Singer. If I could like revert the original audio without the pitch altered to it. Can I find out who's under the mass Singer? I'd be able to like break it. Hmm, that's a, I think that's like a major, major flaw in that show. Cause everyone has this own, their own pitch. That's interesting. That's interesting. Mm. But if I want to try, I, I hate vibrations though. So turn up the reverb here. There we go. We got a reverb. I can turn it on and off with the effects button. All right. So there's no effect to it at all. I don't know what you're talking about. There's no effect. I'm not doing anything to my mic. I swear, dude. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? It saves you from having to turn the knobs up and down, and it also allows you to set up effects and then just turn them all on and off at one time. So let's go into how the effects actually work. They're grouped by preset. There are six presets down the side here that you can create the vocal sound that you want and then save it to that preset. The presets are saved per profile. So you got six presets per profile, unlimited number, number of profiles. You got tons you can do. So let's go through the effects one by one. We already started with reverb. So that puts your voice into a physical space. You've got echo, which is echo. It's the type of echo that you understand. Now that one's a multi-tap and really weird. It goes back and forth.
Wow, there's a lot goes into this. Huh. You can do like a quarter note. Now here's a cool little trick. If you tap the active preset button in time with whatever music or anything that you're singing along to or using echo along to, that will set the tempo of the echo. So watch, I'll make it go faster and then slower. So here's the echo. Here's the echo. Now I'll make it speed up. Speed up. Faster. faster. Hear that? Now I'm going to slow it down. And now you've got a slower echo. So that shows you how echo works. Pretty cool that you can actually time things along, so it really helps mm. you to engage your audience and, uh, and make those echoes sound exactly the way you want. You've also got megaphone. So that's any kind of voice with distortion. Now this... That's the one where these the buttons are not working for me. Make it go faster and then slower. So here's the echo. Here's the echo. Now I'll make it speed up. Speed up. Faster. faster. Check. Hear that? Now Check, 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 I'm going to slow it down. And now you've got a slower echo. So that shows you how echo works. Pretty cool that you can actually time things along, so it really helps you to engage your audience and, uh, and make those echoes sound exactly the way you want. You've also got megaphone. So that's any kind of voice with distortion. Now this right here is an overdrive. You're probably used to more of a megaphone sound, so there are different. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Check your booty. Check your booty. Check your booty. Check your booty. Yeah, see? Go into the comments here. So, different styles along with each one of these effects, and we'll go back into those in a second. Now you've got a robot voice. So you can make the funny robot noises, which is pretty cool as well. And lastly, we've got hard tune, which is like the share or the T-Pain effect. And I'm going to go in depth a little bit on how to get the most out of hard tune in a separate video. So let's walk walk this all the way back to the beginning on the app here. See, I've got some presets here. Big Verb, I've got Comms Radio, Hard Tune, Kid Robot, Pitch Down, Echo, and Tank. Now those are some that we've just included. They actually live up in the preset library here, but you can save presets yourself and bring them into the library and bring them back out into various profiles once you find something that you like. So you can use your presets here to manage what you're doing. Then you've got the controls for each effect. We'll just talk about the basic controls for right now. I want to figure out how to get this megaphone back on. Or the robot. Something. Something obvious. So, kid robot. See, it should be... Adjusting some of the hello, 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 hello. But it's not. I don't hear an echo. I don't hear nothing. Now, why is that? Kid robot. Kid robot. Do I not sound like a robot? Hard tune is a little more obvious. Hard tune music. Hard tune music. I'm so sorry, guys. save any of my settings.
the mic. Hard tune, hard tune, robot. Yes. Get back to button works. Check, check, check. Maybe that's what I need to get. I think I figured it out. Robot, robot, robot. Tonight, I'm just gonna take you there. Why is it so weird? Is that changing? What is going on here? I just want to take you there. Robot, robot. Cartoon. T Pain, Chris Brown, live in the back of a party. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Let's see. Well. So the effects button, though he doesn't mention that in his video, and that's why I'm kind of confused. Okay. Alright, well. You've got your style, which is... ...a phone sound. So there are different styles along with each one of these effects, and we'll go back into those in a second. So there's different styles every time. Um, we're figuring it out. Read, I support you, Master. This is seeing your idea. <laughs> that one, uh, that would take a lot of involvement, though. It definitely would. Now you've got a robot voice. So you can make the funny robot noises. Which is pretty So you can make the funny robot noises. Pretty cool as well. And lastly, we've got hard tune, which is like the share or the T-Pain effect. I think mine's broken. Actually, sound like someone from the next singer. Taylor. Thanks. Um, I think it's because I was messing with it. Hardtoon. Natural. Natural. Hard. This one's hard. Medium. Medium. Tonight, I'm just gonna take you up. There we go. We can do a music one. We can do a game one. Whining. What does that mean? System, system, system. Music. Maybe that. Hold on. Yes, 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 yes. All. All? What do you mean all? Holy crap. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, so for that one, I'm at the same, um, same note, same tone of my voice. I'm not changing anything, it's, it changes it with the music. Uh, 
I just want to take you. Uh, I'm having too much fun with this. Hard to talk to the robot. Uh, robot number one. Robot number one. Robot number three. Number two. I can't really. I can't hear the difference. Tweed. Come here, you. Come here, you. Come here, you. Okay. And I'm going to go in depth a little bit on how to get to having too much fun with this. The most out of hard tune in a separate video. So let's walk this all the way back to the beginning on the app here. See, I've got some presets here. Big verb, I've got comms radio, hard tune, kid robot, pitch down, echo, and tank. Now those are some that we've just included. They actually live up in the preset library here, but you can save presets yourself and bring them into the library and bring them back out into various profiles once you find something that you like. So you can use your presets here to manage what you're doing. Then you've got the controls for each effect. We'll just talk about the basic controls for right now. You've got your stuff. Sorry, I'm like. Robot, pitch down, echo. My right. mind's in that mass singer idea. I think I actually do it through the Google XLR. If I could just, if the pitch, this one is literally like lined up right here you know i turned it i turn it from here to here it should line up with the regular voice be cool as well and lastly we've got hard tune which is like the share or the t-pain effect and i'm going to go in depth a little bit on how to get the most out of hard tune in a separate video so let's walk this all the way back to the beginning on the app here see i've got some presets here big verb got comms radio, hard tune, kid robot, pitch down, echo, and tank. Now those are some that we've just included. They actually live up in the preset library. Let's try tank. What's going on, guys? Oh, you know, we're just uh, hanging out. Kid robot. Kid robot. It's cute. No, this is the hard tune music. <laughs> That's so annoying. Tank. Am I like inside of a tank or what's going on here? Cons radio. Big verb. See, so I can just like flip it on and off. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> Yaz. Here, but you can save presets yourself and bring them into the library and bring them back out into various profiles once you find something that you like. So you can use your presets here to manage what you're doing. Then you've got the controls for each effect. We'll just talk about the basic controls for right now. You've got your style, which is like the type of reverb. So we again remember that reverb is putting me in a physical space, and this is our emulation of a library. If I click something really obviously different, like Hockey Arena, now I have a huge voice in a hockey arena. 
so you can see that I can control the style. I can also control the level, and that's just mirrored by the knob there. So you can see I can turn it up and down. We go over to Echo, and we've got the same thing. Now All right. Okay. All right. Turn that baby on. And then... Turn the reverb all the way up so we can listen to exactly what these all are different. We're now in the library. I need you guys to shut the hell up. There's a library. Dark Bloom, Music Club, Music Club. Hockey Arena. This is a chapel. This is a real place. Welcome to the show. Millions and millions of viewers watching at home now. Those thousands of you that are in the stands today. You guys are awesome. These are sort of musically based. It's quarter note, right? So one, two, three, four. Check, check, check. Okay. Eighth note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You get it if you know music stuff. And then we get on to, to ping pong and slap echo and multi-tap. Those are the kind of stranger ones that will fly around a little bit more in a stereo field. We've also got pitch shifting. I wanted them to do it. We got a big old echo going in. We got a ping pong event. Got a quarter. One, two. Oh, so you'll hear it four times. One, 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 two, 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 three, three. Okay. okay, I get, I get enough. enough. Triple, Triple. Ping, ping pong, pong. Classic. classic, slap, slap. multi tap. It's like this extra little noise at the end. Not sure. Not sure. Not sure. Not sure. Hello. Hello. Well, hello. Well, hello. That's cool. Okay. And we have this style, which is just limited to two. It's narrow and wide. So when I pitch my voice down, I'm going to turn on the pitch here and I can bring it down 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 and it can go way down and back up again now a wide range is two octaves which means 24 semitones of shift when you go all the way down or all the way up like that you get more into the land of it sounds like a funny effect more than it sounds even like a voice so I'm gonna go way down way down welcome or conversely I'm gonna go up 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 now an octave up isn't quite as crazy as two octaves up, which gets really, really weird. Huh. Mine just sounds like a demon. Like I'm gonna take over. Why is that? Why is mine like a demon? Is my FX sound not? No. It should happen either way. I'm changing the pitch of my voice and when I turn the knob without FX on, it doesn't do anything. The FX button needs to be pressed. And then you can turn the knob. So now I just sound like the demon of sound. It just sounds like a creature breathing when I go all the way down. I will destroy you. Listen here, you little I will go down to the lowest volume. I will destroy you. Um, I'm on this Max. This here's Max Singer because, you know, um, I'm a little shy when it comes to my voice. But, you know, when I sing in front of you, in front of these the audience, I just, you know, I'm not shy anymore. I don't want to show this side of me. I've always known 
and I'm, I'm really, really nervous, but, you know, hmm. You never know. What happens when it's narrow? This is what happens when it's narrow. Okay. Well, that's weird. Let's see what happens when we go to the dark side of the army. You will never defeat me. I am immortal, you puny human. Well, now you just pissed me off. Listen here, you little nerd. Listen here, you little nerd. I think this narrow option gives us a little bit more definition. We can still be on the mass Singer, you know. We can still be on the mass Singer. We can still be on the mass Singer. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. You're so awesome. <laughs> it's like all my personalities coming out. Each one of them has its own voice. Alright, and then I go back to the middle, and it's just me again. If I want a narrow range, it limits it to just one octave in each direction, so the most I can go down is down here, and the most I can go up is up here. So it gives you something maybe a little bit more um, usable, uh, and not quite so much of an right, effect at that right, point. Right. Now let's move over to the gender knob. Now people ask, what does gender mean? Well, when I was doing pitch shifting, every time I clicked it down a little bit, it's moving my voice down by a, a semitone, or in this case, two semitones from my normal pitch. So think on a keyboard, you're moving down two notes on the piano, and actually all of my notes come out at that, that uh, pitch. The, the gender is more like formant shifting, so it's not changing the uh, pitch of my voice, but it is still changing the tone. So as I start to move things down here, you can see that my voice sounds different, but the notes that are in my voice, the, the actual tones I'm saying or using are the same. So that's the difference between the two and a combination of gender and pitch can make for some really interesting effects. So sometimes what I like to do is pitch up a little bit, but with gender down. And that makes a different sound than if I had just pitched my voice down like that. So that's a, a different type. I've got my, my pitch down, but no gender. I can also go pitch down and gender up and get some interesting voices there as well. So you can kind of see how it's a mix and match situation with those and you can really get to some fun, fun stuff when you do it that way. Next over we have megaphone. Now there's no level control you'll see there's no amount because it just takes so he uses both gender hello boys hello boys Mommy's here. What's going on, though, no guys? Okay, so I got the gender all the way down. I'm going to turn pitch all the way up. And we're going to get some really interesting um, combinations here. So you can actually see... Oh, wow, that's, that's completely different. Hey, Sharon, you know, I just went to the store with Karen. And it be her ass. Yes, I did. I swear. I saw her do it. She did it. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. 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 She Anakin. Anakin. Wake up. Wake up, Anakin. Let's see some of these knobs. <laughs> Excuse me. We're having a little bit of fun here, guys, all right? It's kind of interesting. It's interesting. It takes over your entire lead voice, and I know you guys can't see the physical thing, but you can, you can see the, what I'm doing right here. It's like when I'm turning these knobs. You can see the knobs being turned. And I am now a demon of hell. I don't know. I just, yeah, I just go with it. Alright. Don't make fun of me, please. I have feelings, too. I guess I can use that. 
to my advantage as well. I don't know what color this is supposed to be. Whatever. Um, where were we? Do the effects and he is on settings over at megaphone. Creates the megaphone or radio sound. So we've we've got kind of mess with megaphone that. here. Oh, bring my pitch back up. There we go. We got megaphone, and then I can go down and I can choose something like radio, which is more of a radio voice. And there's a few others underneath here, and you can mess around with them a little bit inside the uh, advanced. supporter here stone mountain 64 locking it in yeah, that's, uh, that's how he does it dance controls that we'll look at later do the goal XLRs amazing but and then we've got robot. There's a, a basically just the three different styles of robot. There's no uh, level controls as well there because for the same reason as megaphone, it takes over your entire lead voice. It's not an effect added around it, but it's your entire lead voice is affected by robot. And then we get lastly to hard tune. Now, as I said, hard tune is our version of the share or the T-Pain type effect. And you'll notice that there is natural, medium, and hard. Now, natural is actually fairly transparent, but it is still going to try and pitch shift you into the key and scale of any music that it hears. That's a bit of the black magic that TC Helicon has of the share or the T-Pain type effect. And you'll notice that there is natural, medium, and hard. Now natural is actually fairly transparent, but it is still going to try and pitch shift you into the key and scale of any music that it hears. That's a bit of the black magic that TC Helicon has, is that we can listen to music whether it's a corded instrument like a guitar or a keyboard or mixed music, which is more common in streaming, you've got your Spotify running or you've got music in the game. If we can hear chords in that music, we can tune you to the key and scale of the chords that we hear. The more clearly we can hear the chords, the better that that tuning happens. So if you set it to natural, it's gonna restrict you to the key and scale that we think we're hearing, but it won't sound super, super tuned. If you go to hard, then you get way more of the hard tune sound like this. So, there's also the hard tune source, and that's where you're gonna. I wish that was my case. It doesn't work with me though. Tonight, I just want to take you. Up. That's cool. That's really cool. Let's do a hard tune source. And what we just like. It's either. Okay. Cool. Select what source you're listening to for the various chord information, and it goes from all through to music, game a line in and system. And I'm gonna show you in a different video, just a quick follow up, how to actually make that work. So that's a quick overview of the effects. Now each effect also has an advanced menu, just like we had on the mixer with the EQ and the compression and stuff that can slide out actually a ton of things you can mess with here. We'll go over each one of these uh, little sliders here in a different video that's a bit more in depth. Even if you don't know chords at all, you don't know anything about music theory like me, this is perfect for you. And this is super good for you, especially if you like struggle with making melodies, chords, stuff like that. In one of our previous videos, we showed you how to set up audio devices within the Windows 10 environment. It allows you to go to this app volume and device preferences and actually choose specific outputs for GoXLR. We found a free program on the Windows Store called Ear Trumpet. And Ear Trumpet seems to be a lot better at holding on to those devices through power cycles and reboots of the game and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to show you how to use Ear Trumpet. It's very similar to the way that this works, but just slight little tweaks here and there. So you'd literally go to the Windows Store or to the search bar here. You'd search for Ear Trumpet. You get it in the Microsoft Store. 
db it's installed it might actually not pop up for me here but you get in the microsoft store you download it and then you're going to end up with what looks like two of these sound icons and you can actually see this one says system here but i'm going to right click here and go into some settings the way that ear trumpet originally shows up is that it also looks like a speaker so you've got one here and one here or you might even have both of them on the same bar here find the one that when you hover over it says ear trumpet okay and you're gonna first thing you're gonna do so you can find it more easily right click it go to ear trumpet settings and then just click use legacy ear trumpet icon okay so what that's gonna do is turn it into a little trumpet signal here at, at least you can tell the difference between ear trumpet and the Windows audio one I also dragged the Windows audio one off of this bar here and tucked it up into my hidden icons just so that it was easier to not confuse them then with ear trumpet Basically, you just click it, and it's going to pop up this whole group of all the things you've seen before. So you've got music, sample, chat, game. Uh, the speakers are in there from my uh, onboard audio device, and then system for Go XLR. Now, all of these things are all the outputs that I can assign things to. If I want to take a program, like, say, Discord here, right, and I want to move Discord to somewhere else, so I'd like it to come in through chat for chat in and chat out, I can actually right-click it, and I can click on this little double arrow thing and then it allows me to assign it to where I want it to go and now you'll see that discord is on chat here if I wanted it to come through my game fader right click click on the arrows pick game the little caveat that we've got going here is that you normally won't see an input signal until it's actually playing audio so for example with Spotify or even some We've now reached the tutorial where I'll show you how to set up XSplit or OBS. They work basically exactly the same way with GoXLR. But of course, now you get the magical never ending window because I'm actually recording this entire. I use XSplit. Let's take a look at the advanced functions inside the sampler. There's some pretty neat stuff it can do here. So, we've already learned about the bank and the button. But what happens on the button? Well, what you can do is you can have the button play in a certain order, like repeat. So we've gone through that we had that first sample of me, just like this, just, just, just like this, and it just plays over and over again. But I can actually make it play and stop. So when I push the button the first time, it plays. I push the button a second time, and it stops. I can do it so it fades. I can have it stop on release or fade on release, and I can even make it loop. Now that the looping one is probably the easiest one to show because we know we had that Peter Griffin flip them off thing. So we're going to go like this, and we're going to turn it to loop, and we're going to do this. Flip them off. 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 Okay, so you can uh, you can get a bunch of things rolling like that, which is pretty fun. Um, but the other ones needed a little bit longer of an example here. So I've created a really bad long sample here. Uh, I'm going to set it to. I'm going to check on the wait.
play stop. Now this one is just me. I've made a very long sample so that we can use the sample that is very long, that is too long that I am talking about to show you some of the functions of Okay, <laughs> so that was me talking for too long, but you notice I had it set to play stop, and as soon as I push the button again, it stopped. The next one is play fade. It's pretty obvious. Here we go. Bad sample again. I've made a very long sample so that we can use the sample that is very long, that is too long. That is and you see how it faded out there. Really great for cool. music. If you have an intro bumper for like a podcast or a section of your show that you want to do, and you're not entirely sure how long you're going to talk over it, and then eventually you're like, okay, I'm done. I better fade out. You just hit that button and it starts to fade out right then. You've also got stop on release, which is kind of like a momentary playback. So you put it like this. Now, as long as I'm holding the button, it's going to play. I've made a very long sample. But so as soon as I let it go, use the sample that is very long, it stops. Similarly, fade on uh. release, same idea. I've made a very long sample so that we can use the sample that is very long. That is too long. And then it fades out. So now here is the next really cool thing about the sample. You can make stacks. And what that means is I've got this sample here. So it's my recording that I made. Okay. And I have this one of the Peter Griffin one. I'm going to take this Peter one. I'm going to drag it to the same place where this other sample exists. Now there are two samples assigned to this one button. See this recording and that uh. recording. So now I have the first one. If I go play next, it's this on this bottom button here, right? Bottom right, play next, sequential. It'll play me. So start with Peter. I've made a very long sample. Goes to that one. Well, Goes back to Peter. I've made a very long sample. Goes back to me. Well, you forgot to flip them off, but uh, other than that, nice chip. Okay, so now you've got multiple samples that play in a sequential order. So if you had five of them, it would play one, two, three, four, five. That's cool. You can also choose random. So it will pick at random out of this sample stack, anything from there, it'll just randomly pick one and play it. So why do you want it? What's the advantage? The advantage is, imagine you have six or eight cool things that you want to use as like a post kill taunt for somebody. You know, you're playing a game and you just want to like yell something at them when you kill them. You can use a stacked sample in random mode. So instead of having four kill shot, you know, or taunts afterwards, you can use one button and stack four on that same button. And now that you have a single button that is your taunt button, you hit that and randomly stuff comes out. So you can get a bit of an unknown quality to it where you're getting random things that are happening. You can play off that with your stream. And also you can have these more thematic buttons. Uh, you could have in a tabletop game, you could have a whole bunch of combat sounds. You don't know exactly which one's going to come up, but in the moment, it doesn't really matter. You just need a combat sound, so you push that button. It can kind of help you keep control over the number of samples that you have and make them a little bit more manageable from playback to playback. Another cool thing that the sampler can do is you can use the routing tab to determine what is actually going into the sampler. So you can see here that the only thing going in by default is my mic. So it means I can make a sample really quickly on the fly. But what if I wanted to sample somebody from my Discord chat because what? they're hilarious and I want to get you know their voice on my stream or something like that? I could turn off sampler in the routing tab and turn on chat in, and that's going to be sampling anything I hear from Discord. So what I could do is say, you know, say something funny. Just say three, two, one, and then whatever you're going to say. As soon as you hear them saying three, two, one, you hold down the button, you record everything they're saying, you then go into the sampler, and you're going to have the waveform there, and you just trim out the three, two, one, and now you have a sample of your friend saying something funny that you can use again. It works exactly <laughs> the same for music. If you've got Spotify running and you want to capture a little bit of it. That's cool. So putting those on, let's try it. The f you said to me, you little. Now the f you said to me, you little. I'll have the music in there too. Okay, that's cool. Also, be cool. Do the game one. So that like smooth like butter. Do that kind of stuff. I can make that like a button. A song or your game is playing. I feel like there's there's too few buttons on the sampler then, you know? Like I mean I know I can do some on the stream deck, but that's more on like visual. I wonder if there's some sort of way to pair it. 
the tie is. Playing as long as the game is assigned to the game fader, it will oh, pick so it up fire. there. Otherwise, you can use system as kind of a catch-all. Works the same for console and the line in as well. Obviously, at the end here, you can't sample the sample because that would just create feedback. And that about covers it for the sampling. There's a lot of flexibility in there to play with. Troubleshooting. What would any good tutorial be if there wasn't some sort of troubleshooting guy because sometimes things horribly go... Sometimes things... What the f***? Sometimes things really... And you gotta... Never mind. Hi. Hi. Um, sometimes things go a little bit wrong while you're streaming. And you don't really know exactly what it is that's going wrong, so we're going to try and give you some steps to follow to remedy those situations. Typically, you might find yourself in a situation where you just can't hear your mic. First thing to check is, do you have a condenser mic that requires power and you forgot to turn phantom power on? It's a good step. Take a look at the fader. If the fader has gone way down, your voice will get super quiet and you will not be able to hear it anymore. Check to make sure that nothing is muted, because if it's muted, you can't hear yourself. That's the first couple of... That's actually a good point. I should have asked this. Oh, that's already got all... I think in this other video, he's going to set up... In this next one, he's going to set up how to uh, use Obia Studio, which is what we use. So it's awesome. Places to look. The next step, if something is going wrong and you Coming. still can't see anything that's sort of having a problem is you can close the app and on, restart Jake, it again. The so if you do that, you can't just press the X here. That's just gonna Jake, you're awesome. Jake did great. Jake, you're very the uh, more runs of Jake. Jake, you're awesome. Jake did great. Jake, you're very the uh, more runs of Jake. <laughs> Jake, you're awesome. Jake did great. Jake, you're very the uh, more runs of Jake. Jake the snake, bruh. Jake the snake, bruh. <laughs> the you said to me, you little. Jake the snake, bruh. Jake the snake, mother. Jake the snake, mother. The you said to me, you little. I'm gonna move it down to the tray, and here we are with our excellent recording window behind us again. So <laughs> this is it's so fun. Infinity, yay! It'll just go down to the tray, okay? You actually have to go to the tray over here, right click, and close the app. Bam, now it's closed. Now I can go back and I can restart the GoXLR app. So it's gonna take a second there, and it's gonna pop back up again. Once that happens, and we've redone the app, now I can push this up, see? Oh, update detected! We can update! We'll do that in a different one. <laughs> um, once it. Uh. Xander, what's going on, my man? Xander, I'm not sure what we can do with your name, though. You little... I swear to... That's... Xander, I'm not sure what we can do with your name, though. You little... I swear to... That's... Xander, I'm not sure what we can do with your name, though. You little... I swear to... You said to me, you little... Jake the Snake, mother... The... Zan, you said to me, sure you little. We can do with your name, snake, you said to me, you little. Zan, I'm not sure. Jake, much. Snake, you said to me, you little. Name, though. You little. I swear to. That's. <laughs> it's actually done the this restart of the app. Everything should reconnect and it should work for you. We're not going to play Car now. We're just going to mess up the Go XLR. If you're still <laughs> not getting any audio, there's a way to. This is good, though. Like for any future streams, we can. This is like a, you know, this is my Christmas present, so I gotta, you know, use it. Christmas present, that's right, I haven't used this since Christmas. This is awesome. Do a quick check. So far. You want to go into Windows and just go... Now I know how to use it. And then... I can actually sound like a demon from the dark side. You, puny human, how dare you? I came on to this season's Max Singer because, well, um, I'm shy. I'm really shy. Please don't. Don't, don't make me sing. Um, audio, there we go. So I picked audio, it goes manage audio devices. That was that first window that we brought up a long time ago. 
If you go to the recording tab here, just talk into the mic and you should see these levels going up and down. If you don't see them here, or conversely, if you don't see these actual devices sitting here anymore, then there's something wrong. You should try to either make sure your USB cable, just see all of them. Is that right now? Oops. Oops, I did it again. Why aren't these working? Why are these going up and down? Like you said. What you. Huh? What? Who? Hello? Hmm. It was still good, so maybe try a different cable just to make sure. Or you can power cycle your device. Uh, last case scenario is that giving your computer a restart. Watch your setup where everything was redone. Help things. <laughs> so that's kind of the order I would look for. So, I appreciate Phantom it, Power. Way faders being too far down or the mutes being on, looking at whether or not these devices are actually passing audio and whether or not they exist, and closing the app and restarting it, and then lastly, restart your computer or power cycle the device itself. So there's some little power troubleshooting tips so that when your thing isn't working anymore, then you can make sure that you can get it back to working <laughs> condition. Oh, and for those of you who have been paying attention, ah... Uh, now, do I leave it solved or do I just annoy you just a little bit? I'll just, I'll just leave it just not quite. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I can't even leave it like that for myself. Hold on. There we go. Okay, good. All right. Bye. <laughs> there we go. So I picked audio again. So infinity. Yay. It'll just go down to the tray. Okay. You actually have to go to the tray over here.
Right click and all right. They're talking crap. Who did it, huh? That's not close the app. Damn, now it's closed. Now I can go back and I can restart the GoXLR app. So it's going to take a second there and it's going to pop back up again. Once that happens, we've redone the app. Now I can push this up. See, oh, update detected. We can update. We'll do that in a different. <laughs> um, once it's actually done the restart of the app, everything should reconnect and it should work for you. If you're still not getting any audio, there's a way to do a quick. All right, we have audio. Oh no, we're not seeing these bars, but. There's one really cool advanced feature inside the mixer and it's mute mode. One more attempt. I think I know why. Maybe it'll help if I. I muted myself. Nope. Okay. Cool advanced feature inside the mixer, and it's mute modes. We have four in there right now, and we're looking at adding some more in the future as well. Let's go over the ones that, that you can see. When you look at the mute options down here, there's all stream only, which means it mutes only to your stream. Oh my. Oh what? Settings. I feel like it didn't save any of my. Mm. <laughs> you had it inverted, text only. No. Large. Do that for all of them. But it didn't save. Why did it not save? Why? Why? Voice. Let's change that to chat. Is this still saved? This is. Same with this one. Invert. Icon. Large. Same. Invert. Icon. Maybe it's too big. For the large, just keep it medium. There's also mute options. Mute to stream. Mute to voice chat. Mute to phones. To line out. Chat only. It only mutes whatever's going to chat, Discord, whatever that is, and mutes only to your headphones. So the way that you can use this in a really cool way is imagine that you're co-streaming with somebody. You guys are chatting on Discord, but you're also both streaming to your respective audiences. If you were to go along and click stream only as your mute, it would mute whatever you're saying through your mic to your stream. So the example I'm going to use here, we're going to use music instead. It's just easier for me to talk and use the music at the same time. But here's some music, okay? And I'm muting it everywhere. So when I hit that, I can't hear it in my headphones. You guys can't hear it as the broadcast mix. But if I let it come back and I click stream only, when I hit the mute button, you'll notice something different happens with the mute and the slider, and also I'll still be able to hear the music in my own headphones, but you won't because you're the streamer at this point, or you're the stream viewer at this point. So here comes the music. I hit the mute, and now I can hear the music still in my headphones, and you'll notice the fader did not jump down to the bottom. This indicates that although it's muted, <laughs> it's not muted everywhere. This gives you a visual indication that somebody, somebody somewhere is getting this music, and this is set up by these buttons down here. Now I can show you another version of this where I change it to chat only mute. So I'm going to unmute it here. You'll hear it again. I'm going to change it to chat only. Now when I mute it, 
you'll actually hear that the music is still going to the stream. You guys are the stream viewers. I hear it in my headphones, but chat, so Discord, does not hear it at that point. And we're going to kill the music there. Now, how is this useful? Okay, you're on Discord, and you want to discuss something with the person that you are streaming with, and you don't want your stream to hear it. Mute it to stream only, so that that way you can still chat on Discord, and they can hear you, but that your stream doesn't hear it. If you flip that on its head, and say you got a subscriber that just subbed for like two, three, four years in a row, and you want to give that person a personal shout out, or you want to promo um, something that you're being activated for as a streamer, you really don't want to pollute the Discord of your streaming partner with those things. So you right. hit chat only. Now, when you hit the mute on your own microphone, you're only communicating with your headphones and your audience, and you can do that shout out without annoying the person that you're streaming with. Really, really cool. For phones only, you can do a mute where you just mute it from your headphones. See, that's interesting. That's a new, that's a different one that I was doing it. So the way I was doing it, over here, see my mic's on, I just mute it, turn it up, I can still hear them. But that would make sense, so I wouldn't have to. Chat settings mute stream. So then that does that same effect that I want, right? Check, 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 check. No, it just mutes to the stream. This oh, this is back it up. That just mutes all of it. Mute, 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 mute. That way I can still hear it. Bella? Now I can still hear it. Oh snap, what's your Discord server? Uh, it's not named the you know, dev. I mean, I guess it is named, but it's not in the URL. You'll have to um, get an invite. Um, that often can work really well for things like um, you so why is it not hmm. you want to run music in between use the ah. mic ah. so I can press ah. this this is, this is cough Stream. You guys can go hear me. Okay. That's cool. Bella. Probably not a good time for you to. Bella. Come on. Check, 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 Bella, stop moving around. You're going to keep it in your head. Check, 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 check. Now if I press this, now the stream won't hear me. Now the stream can't. Check. 
Sure. Bye. You guys can hear me. That's crap. Oh, it's maybe because of my stream session. Not right. Okay. Cool though. Okay. Boot the phone. Queen uh, playing the game, and when you're uh, talking to your audience afterwards, and you don't want to hear the music while you're playing, but you want to hear it while you're just chatting, you can use the two phones one to mute it so that you don't hear the music, but they still do when you're doing the stream. And you can achieve that through the routing tab as well, but I find that the mute modes are a little bit faster. Hello. Really, really cool. For phones only, you can do a mute where you just mute it from your headphones. Um, that often can work really well for things like um, you want to run music in between uh, playing the game and when you're uh, talking to your audience afterwards, and you don't want to hear the music while you're playing, but you want to hear it while you're just chatting. You can use the two phones one to mute it so that you don't hear the music, but they still do when you're doing the stream. But you can achieve that through the routing tab as well, but I find that the mute modes are a little bit faster. This is more than just TV. You're watching history happen live. And it's all happening here on YouTube TV. Don't miss a moment of the TV you love with live TV from... Let's set up OBS with GoXL. We started up a new scene here, but you may have your own devices and sources and all that listed in here. This, 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 beep, 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 beep. Look at that. No, no, no. She was like blowing her nose and it's kind of like what I wanted to do when her nose closed. Laura, thanks for liking the stream. I think I might just like finish this and then I might restart the stream and actually like play. <laughs> We're just going to treat it as though there's They need to add like a Facebook just chatting option. They really, really do. I don't understand why it's not a thing yet. Or maybe they have. Let's see. Video game called just no. Maybe because they want to call it something else, or maybe because it's not a video game thing. So in your case, you might just need to switch ah. things around a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up into File and to Settings. There's an audio tab here that I'm going to click on, and if you see down here, there's a bunch of different audio devices we can pick from. The first thing we do is set the default one here for desktop audio device to disabled. So now I actually desktop audio device. Desktop audio. I don't see desktop audio device. I see desktop audio. Oh. Oh. Alright, you might not be able to hear me for a little bit. I have no audio devices going into OBS. Then I'm not going to use these first two desktop audio devices. I'm going to use mic auxiliary. And I'm going to go down here and select broadcast stream mix. Now, as you know, the broadcast stream mix for GoXLR is what you hear in your headphones. 
it's the sum of mic, music, game, chat, system, console, line in, everything that comes from GoXLR that comes into your headphones goes out broadcast stream mix. That way you get a one-to-one -one representation of what you hear and what your stream hears is the same thing. We're done. That's all you have to do. That was the whole point. You have broadcast stream mix coming in, you click apply, you click, click OK, okay. And, and now you can see my audio is coming perfectly into sure. OBS. If you had now previously had any kind of filter set up, so you'd set them up over here, you Check. Hold on. Stop it. I'm trying to see if this works. All right, don't talk, okay? Want to remove them. So, for example, if you had something like a noise gate, uh, there's a noise gate in GoXLR. If you had something like a compressor, there's a compressor in GoXLR. You're going to want to not have those things in there. Literally click on them, click the minus. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Bye bye. They're all gone now. And also in the advanced audio properties, you want to click monitor off because you're listening to the audio in real time from the headphone output of GoXLR. The last thing here is the sync offset. So we usually do a little clap test. You just, right? You see how well the audio from the clap lines up with the video from Wait, the clap. Sometimes there's an off. Hold up, bro. We usually do a little clap test. You just love GoXLR. Properties, sure, bye-bye. They're all gone now. And also in the advanced audio properties, you want to click monitor off because you're... Oh my gosh. Get out. Get out of there. Don't get... Hmm. Dad? What? That, was just, that wasn't for you. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Hmm. What's that face for, huh? Something I haven't done yet though is the game, the actual, actual game, make sure it works. <laughs> We're listening to the audio in real time from the headphone output of GoXLR. The last thing here is the sync offset. So we usually do a little clap test. You just, right? You see how well the audio from the clap lines up with the video from the clap. Sometimes there's an offset because of video rendering and typically the audio will be a little bit early. So you try 50 milliseconds. Ooh, that's 500. 50 milliseconds. You click it in there and you do a little test recording and you see if that lines it up. If not, you try more and more until it seems to get go off the other direction and then you bring it back and eventually you'll find a happy medium. That's the way to absolutely perfectly line up your audio within OBS. It's that easy. One Piece Treasure Cruise. Celebrating five... I don't have a... Welcome to Warner Brothers Studio Tour Hollywood! Walk, stand, and sit in the exact same places as some of your favorite stars. Pivot! We've had a few questions about how the signal path works in GoXLR, so I thought I'd run you through it really quickly. The very first thing that happens is that the microphone hears your voice and creates a super itty bitty teeny tiny signal of electricity as the um, sound hits the, the diaphragm on the microphone, which gets sent down the XLR cable that plugs into GoXLR. From there it goes through what's called a preamp or a pre-amplifier that takes that itty bitty teeny tiny signal and makes it a whole lot bigger so that you can use it in audio applications. So that happens in the hardware. Right in here there's a bunch of resistors and capacitors and stuff in there that I don't know too much about that makes it happen. And then it goes through What? Since you sound like an electrical engineer, he ain't even no electrical engineer, bro. I'm gonna return this real quick.
Alright, I need to excuse myself for a second. I'll be right back. Let's go.
Okay, sorry guys. I'm sorry. We have in our first stage as a limiter, and a limiter makes sure that the level that's coming in doesn't get too loud to the point where it distorts. From there, it starts going into the processing, and the processing happens on board GoXLR in our DSP chip. And DSP stands for Dig Digital Signal Processor. Okay, so the signal's been amplified or boosted up, and now it's inside the processor. And then it goes through the various stages of control over the sound, like your equalizer, right? So how bassy and trebly is it? Your compressor that reduces the highest highs of, of volume and the lowest lows of volume and tries to kind of even out the sound level to make it sound smooth and consistent. The gate is exactly kind of how it sounds, is that you need to have a certain amount of something to have the gate open. So in this case, you need to have a certain amount of audio volume for the gate to open up, and then a certain amount of time to elapse before the gate closes down. And then lastly is the de -esser. and the de removes sort of a harsh S sound. So it doesn't actually happen in exactly this order. It more so goes through the gate first, so it basically determines, is this open or closed? So I'm gonna mess with this a little bit and you'll be able to hear. If I turn this threshold way up, you'll actually hear my voice start cutting out a little bit. As I... There we go, I go right over the threshold of where my voice is just not quite triggering it. I have to talk more loudly to make it come through, and then if I talk quietly, it starts going away. You wanna find a threshold that's at the lowest it can be, like the, the most negative number it can be down here. And not pick up the room right so you don't want it open all the time i can turn it off and you'll hear hear my room in the background there and then if i pick the threshold up there around 46 for me or minus 46 this is a pretty quiet room it opens it up when you get over that threshold but when i'm quiet my room sound goes away and now you can hear how fast it goes away or how Can you hear the room? How long it takes to go away by the release here. I always keep the attack pretty much at 10 milliseconds. That's like as fast as it'll go. You want all of your the initial parts of your words to come through. So you want that to react really quickly. Then it goes into the release here. And if I make the release quite long, 2000 milliseconds is two seconds. Listen how long it all takes right. to start closing up that gate. 
you can hear how it tapers off like that. Whereas if I do it really, really fast, like 10 milliseconds, it's going to start chopping. Here we go. So as soon as I drop below that threshold, it starts chopping off and sounds really kind of weird. I find that somewhere in the 250 to 350 millisecond range works pretty well. You can hear there's a kind of natural as it closes up. On you, that works quite well. So actually what's happened is we're going through the gate first, then we're going to the equalizer and we're doing all of our messing around with bass and treble. And I've already set up my mic. We did that in the other video. It then goes through the compressor. Okay, and the compressor is now squishing that dynamic range to make sure that the loudest me and the quietest me are all fairly similar in volume. But one of the things that the compressor does is it's also squeezing what happened in the equalizer and it can kind of hype frequencies that you may not like very much. And that's why the de-esser falls last in the chain. I'm gonna make an S sound with my voice and I'm gonna ride the de-esser up and down and you'll hear the S's get less prominent as the amount goes up. So here I go, I'm gonna start at nothing and I'm gonna skate. Big breath in. How long can Greg hold that for? <laughs> <laughs> now I find that totally off makes it fairly essy. It's a Essie, 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 but totally on makes it sound fairly dead to me. So I try and find a level that kind of lets me still say S. Here we go, I'm saying S. S. Yeah, that's pretty natural sounding, but it's not kind of poking out and sticking me in the ear with a big S sound. So there you go. That is the signal chain. That's essentially how it works for how your mic starts out, S. comes from your voice, down the cable, into all the processing, and then all of that gets sent further on to our voice effects processor, the sampler, and what is this? Introducing this voice. Cool. Let's go over the routing tab in a little bit more depth. It's laid out from left to right and vertically. So the inputs are across the top here and where those inputs go is laid out down the side. The sampler is a bit of an exception, but we'll talk about that at the end. So this here where it says stream, that is broadcast stream mix. So when in OBS or XSplit, when we talk about picking broadcast stream mix as your only audio device out, that is what we're talking about. When it comes to what goes into that mix, there's a series of tick boxes. And I just click them on and off to determine what goes out to my main broadcast mix. In most cases, you're probably gonna to wanna to have everything going out there. However, if you don't want music going out to your stream, but you'd like to hear it for yourself, and you can untick music and it no longer goes to your stream. There's all sorts of ways that you can tweak this, but the principle is the same. Just click on and off. There you go voice chat out, so Discord or TeamSpeak or Skype or whatever you're talking on, my mic goes to it, but I've chosen that everything else except for my samples don't go out to it. So my game noise isn't going out to my friends on Discord, neither is my music, but it, for a minute I wanted to share a song with them. It's as simple as clicking the music and now they'd be able to hear the song and I can click back. For headphones, it's exactly the same by default as the broadcast stream mix. So what you hear in your headphones is what goes to the stream. But like we said before, I could turn off music and because it's still in my headphones, I still hear it. Vice versa, don't want to listen to it in my headphones, want it on the stream. Uh, don't want to listen to the line in, maybe I'm using that for a music input source, but I do want it on my stream. It's as simple as ticking the boxes. Now the sampler is the last one here that is a little bit different. The sampler tick boxes are telling you what am I sampling from? What is the sampler listening to in order to create the recordings? So by default, it's my mic. And anything that I'm saying into my mic, including all of the voice effects, will all go to the sampler. But if I had a friend being a jackass on Discord and I wanted to capture something of them, I could click voice chat in and unclick mic and now it's only listening to Discord and I say, hey, say that silly thing. And they say the silly thing while you hold down the record button, you then have a sample of it and you can go in and trim it and do all that stuff. That's how you can capture just the voice chat or just your music or your game if you wanted to make a little meme from game audio, anything like that. Obviously there's two boxes here that are darkened and it's because you can't record the sampler 
from the sampler because it wouldn't be recording anything. And same with the voice chat in, you cannot route it to the voice chat out because you would create feedback. You'd be feeding your friends to yourself, to your friends, to yourself and back and forth and it would blow up on you. So there we are back to the default settings, but you can take that any way you want. We're very proud of this feature. We think it's one of the things that makes GoXLR really easy to use. Children's Hospital Colorado Mighty Millions Raffle VIP deadline is next week. Win a Tesla and a Tuscany vacation. There's over 8,600 prizes, including the 2. Let's look at how to get the most out of your hard tune. Now, as we talked about in the basics video for effects, hard tune has a source. It's all music, game, line in, or system. Now, if you set it to all, it's going to listen to any of those sources or even all of them at one time that are coming in, which can be a bit detrimental if you're trying to make sure that you can tune the best you can. Because you imagine if you've got a game and maybe there's some weird audio going on in there, or we think there's some chords coming even just from what we hear as gun. How did this get turned around now? Unshots or whatever it is that's in the game that we can tune a little less accurately to it. So sometimes you're better off to actually pick which uh, source here has the music coming in. So just like I did in the mixer setup video, I have YouTube set up here and I have it set to come in on my music channel. Okay, so it's set up in the mixer to come in through music, right, which is set to channel two, okay? And what I'm going to do is go over to the effects tab here and I'm going to choose music in the hard tune source. So now it's only listening to what's coming in through music. In this case, it's YouTube. Now I've picked a song that I can sure. sing kind of sure. okay, but I'm going to put on the hard tune and then I'm going to hey. let you guys hear how hey. it works with the hard tune as I go along. I'm also, of course, going to add in a bit of reverb here. Now that's the wrong reverb because we left off at the hockey arena one. We're going to go back to something like library or maybe music club. That probably sounds pretty okay. There we go. Now I'm going to go into YouTube and I'm going to pick this train song that I can sing somewhat poorly okay and uh, I'm going to turn hard tune on and now that we've got the music as the only thing it's listening to it's basically just listening to this chrome instance here and it's going to use that for the chords. She's back in the atmosphere with drops of Jupiter in her hair, yeah. Okay. I can't play that song. He's played. It has a pretty easy time following along. That's a really good thing for you to be able to use when you're wanting to make sure you really lock in. Using that little trick, you can get the most out of hard to. Okay, I really like this and how it's turning out, and I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like super inspired. Like, I hear this and I'm so inspired. And yeah, that's it. That's the beat right there. It's finished. Let's take a closer look at the advanced compressor and gate settings. Some of you may not know what any of these things mean, and that is totally okay. You can use just the collapsed version, it's an amount control for the compressor and it's essentially a one knob. You turn it up till it sounds good, you turn it down and you set it and forget it. But if you'd like to learn about how all this stuff works, I'm going to do my best to explain it. So compression, in a nutshell, reduces the highest level of the volume that's going in and brings up the lowest level, essentially squishing or compressing the dynamic range or the, the loudness range of the signal into something smaller which in broadcast often sounds more even and consistent. And that's where you typically will get, combined with equalization, the sort of radio voice sound where everything is just nice and smooth. So threshold here is the level at which the compression starts to happen, which means 
as my voice reaches a certain level, the compressor kicks in and starts compressing that dynamic range. So I typically set this to somewhere in this range, minus 15, minus 20. Let's test it. Test, 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 test. Minus 15 is really high. That is really very, very high. DB, I actually like to lightly compress fairly often. Other people like to just heavily compress when it gets super loud, and that's more like what they would call a limiter, which is just it hits a wall and you don't want it to go any louder than that. But I like to have the compressor kick in somewhere in the middle of the levels that I'm using for my voice. So you can start with minus 15 and see how it goes from there. The ratio, which is right Tonight. next to it, is how much do we reduce it? For that is so loud! So, so as I pass go 15 30. decibels here, minus 30 15 good. dB, yeah, I think so. for every decibel I go over that, it's going to reduce it by 4. So that's a 4 to 1. For something very subtle, you want like a 1.2, 1.6. I find 4, uh, 2.5, 3.2. These ones in the middle sound quite nice and smooth. But essentially, that's how the thing sort of arcs off the volume level as you go over the threshold. And the higher the ratio, Alex, what's going on? Thanks for like this one, man. Over by 8, or down by 8. Uh, it's 61 degrees out here in Chicago. Sound. So these are the ones that sound a bit more natural. Back to the outdoor entertainment center. The attack center. here is... How fast, so after I've gone over this threshold, how fast does the compressor start compressing? Generally, I set this quite fast. I say I want it to compress pretty much right away. If I've gotten too loud or anything, just bam, hit it and start compressing. The release, on the other hand, is how long does it take for me to let go of that compression? How long do I continue to compress that signal? Now, if you set your release very long, you'll actually end up hearing a lot of room noise and things because the compressor is trying to bring up the level of nothing because you've stopped talking. So you don't want it to be too long, but you don't want it so short that it starts sounding kind of wavy, for lack of a better word. It would start sort of breathing and, and, and it sounds a bit funny. So I find that I start around 100 milliseconds and I might make my way up to somewhere in the 300s maybe, um, I, but some you know anywhere over that's going to start getting a little bit long. The last control is makeup gain. The trick that I use to figure out how much makeup gain I need is I find my threshold, okay? And I've set it down, say, minus 15, which means as things come up over that threshold, I know they're going to compress. I actually take the threshold now and set it to zero, which means until I get to the very maximum of me speaking, it's not going to do any compression. And I put the makeup gain to maximum zero. Maximum amount of me hear speaking. My voice sounding pretty much exactly as it goes in. There's no, there should be no compression happening at this point. No compression. I then flip it back to my minus 15, and I'll notice that my voice gets a little bit quieter. What's happened is it's squished the dynamic range, but by bringing down the peaks, it's also brought down the overall level, and you need to make up, haha, -ha, make up gain for that amount and bring it back up. So in this case, I've brought it up by 5 dB, and you can just use your ears to make sure that it sounds good. If you start getting into quite high levels of makeup gain, it's definitely an indicator that you may have to do your mic yes. setup over again. So you go into system there, Check and you do your talking into the mic, and you make sure that you're sitting in the range here. Um, it's, it's a good indicator that you may be in the low range if you're pumping up a bunch of makeup gain, or that you've done compressor settings that are super aggressive. Like if you've got your threshold really low, so you're compressing all the time, and you've got your range Hello. super high, Welcome so you're to the stream, guys. to live and hack out everything. It's in the green. We're really looking good. Gain. And that may be the sound that you're looking for, We're looking but generally good. people are looking for something that controls the dynamics without actually making it sound compressed. Let's move on to the gate. So the gate works in exactly the same way, except the gate is almost working backwards. The gate is allowing sound through when you're making noise, and then it's closing that gate down and making it so that there's no noise when you're not speaking. So the threshold is actually for when the gate opens. So similarly to, you know, when do I start compressing after what level, the gate threshold is when do I open up the gate and allow the audio through. I see. The quieter your room, the lower this threshold can be. If you have high background noise, you're going to have to set a higher threshold. Or in the case of I have a quite clicky mechanical keyboard, I have to set my threshold and be pretty tricky with it to knock out my keyboard sounds but still allow me to speak. So there's a balance there of kind of trying things and experimenting. The attack 
How fast does the gate open when it hears me speaking? You want that to happen as fast as possible, otherwise you might be in a situation where you're cutting off T's and S's in the very beginnings of sounds and it can make things sound a little hey. weird. So there's really no reason to not just have this down as low as it will go, but we put the control in there anyway. You want it to do something strange with an effect or something like that. Hey. Hey. And the release, the same way it worked for the compressor, is how long does it take for that gate to close back up again after it hears uh, the level go below the threshold so it says oh i've heard you know now we're at uh, this is at minus 45 we say now i'm at minus 46 and i should close but i'm going to take 650 milliseconds so just over half a second to close the gate the amount of time that it takes to close the gate can prevent a kind of chopping sound where it cuts off at the end so there you go some in-depth look at the compressor and the gate Let's talk about profiles in GoXLR. It's actually something that people stumble a little bit with when they first get the product. The biggest caveat we have here is always, always, always save your profile whenever you do something cool. Something cool means manipulating almost anything in the product with a couple of exceptions that are global. So let's talk about the global stuff first. When you've gone into the system tab and you've done your mic setup, you've set the gain for your mic or you've chosen whether or not you have a condenser mic that requires phantom power or not, that's a global setting and isn't affected or saved by the profiles. It's just saved in the background of the app and loads every time the app loads. Same goes for anything on your mic tab here. The goal is that you make your mic sound awesome and then you don't actually have to touch this stuff again. You just know your mic will sound awesome no matter which profile you're in. Things that are saved within your profile are the mixer settings, so the levels of where the mixer is set, where I'm moving them up and down with the fader here, those get saved, okay? Your mute modes, so when I mute my microphone, it's gonna mute just to my stream, all right? So it's gonna not go to my broadcast stream mix, but it's gonna go everywhere else. That's saved in the profile, along with which channels, one, two, three, or four, have which sources applied to them. So this is the, what do I wanna control with the physical sliders on the device? So I've got chat on my channel three here, so you can see voice chat is on channel three. Right, but I don't have a control set up for console, so I'd have to use the slider here to control my console volume, which is the optical in on the back. All of those settings are saved per profile. Then we've got samples and presets. Now they're saved to the profile, but also to your library. And it's allowed you to have access to particular samples or particular presets for your voice effects. Josh, thanks for the stream. What's up? Day cookies but not necessarily have to tie them to a profile. So the, what I mean about that is that... Zan, I'm not sure much we can do with your name, though. You little... I swear to... Jake the Snake, mother... The... You sending me, you little... Josh, what the... You sending me, you little... Josh, what the... You sending me, you little... The... You sending me, you little... Zan, I'm not sure much we can do with your name, though. Jake the Snake, mother... Josh, what the... I'm sending me a little the, the, You sending me a little Jake the Snake, mother Zan, I'm not sure what Josh, what the We can do with your name, though Zan, I'm not sure what Zan, I'm not sure what You sending me a little Jake the Snake, mother We can do with your name, though You little Let's go to preset three here. I'm just gonna call it up. It's called huge verb. Okay, so let's let's turn huge verb into a huge echo and then save it. So if I want to just make huge verb smaller like this and I don't actually want to call it anything different or anything like that but in this profile I just want to have less echoes or, or less reverb so just a little bit of reverb here if I save the profile okay and I change to another one now I've got this crazy thing and I go back now we've got this low amount of echo here okay so that wasn't actually the sound of huge verb that was saved in my preset library I've modified what it is within the profile I still have a preset that I've saved in here called Huge Verb, and it has different settings. Those are the settings I initially started with. And if I drag it in, it's going to replace it, and the verb will go way up. Here we go. Now I've got a huge reverb. So what this allows you to do is to rename and save presets. So you mess with all the knobs, you know, you do a bunch of settings, you fire open these big windows that have all these crazy controls in there, you come up with a really cool sound you like, and you happen to be on number three Huge Verb here, and you go, well, I don't want to overwrite Huge Verb. You can either choose to save it in your profile just right then and the only thing it will be saved in is that profile. Or you could right click it here and say save to library. So often you might rename it. So what we'll do is we'll turn a huge verb, I'll turn down the reverb here and I'll turn on a giant echo. Now I have a giant echo. Okay. 
now I go rename, and I go huge echo. Enter. Now it's called huge echo, okay? And I can go save to library, and you will see that huge echo now shows up in my library. I can drag that particular preset to any one of these buttons in any profile, and then I would still have to save the profile to say, those presets that I've dropped in here, I want them to load every time this profile loads. It's exactly the same for your sampler, so we're going to give an example here, okay? Every time you record in the sampler, it will keep that recording. I'm going to clear out the first button of the sampler, and I'm going to make a sample right now. And I'm going to make a sample right now. I'm even going to trim it because it didn't quite sound as sexy as I wanted. And I'm going to make a sample, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to make a sample right now. There we go, that's better. Now what that's done is it's actually recorded automatically to the very bottom of your recorded folder. You can see right here, I have that sample. So if I were to clear this off, there's nothing in there. I still know that I have that sample automatically saved. And I still trim it again. And I'm going to make a sample right now, right into my...
sampler. But that's not saved to this profile yet because I haven't hit save. So if I hit save, and then I go to another profile, and I come back, lo and behold, that sample is still, and I'm gonna make a sample right now on that button. Conversely, if you made samples that you like, um, so I made one earlier here, uh, you can rename those samples from within the folder. So you click the little folder here and you find in your recorded samples here, you'd find the one right here. And I'd go, you know, rename it to like, Craig being weird. Okay, and now, in my recorded samples, I'll actually drag this out. I'm going to actually cut this. I'm going to control X on that sample. I'm going to go back to samples. I'm actually going to paste it right in there. And now you can see, look, it shows up right here. Okay, so now I have a sample of me being weird, whatever that is. And I'm going to make a sample right now on the second sample button. So we're going to look at the top right. There's nothing in there. I can drag in Craig being weird. So I'm going to polish it. And any samples that I make into the sampler. Okay, so that shows me that in my library exists this sample that does that sound. But if I haven't saved the profile and I go away and I come back, now that sample is still here clearly in my library. But on that top right button, no sample because I never saved it. So I have to go down here, drag it in, okay? Then go to the profile, save the profile, and now it's all been saved. So everything within the box beyond those mic settings and the, the uh, including the routing tab. And so anything on the routing tab here changes depending on how you have it set up. So you can see this. I can add a bunch of things in here. I can save this profile. Okay, and I can go back to a different one. You see all of those change. That's so that like maybe one time you're using your line out for a console and the other time you're wanting your broadcast cast stream mix not to have music in it or whatever you want to do. You can set up profiles for the type of game you're playing, for the stream you're doing at the time, for a podcast you're on sometimes. Anything is possible and the routing obviously is a part of how that all works. So we want to make sure that that's a part of what gets saved in the profile. So as long as you remember that absolutely everything in here is getting saved beyond those mic effects, you'll remember to save before you exit so you don't end up feeling like you did a whole bunch of work you bail out of the app and then you came back and nothing was the same. Hope that helps everybody to understand profiles. Yeah, those prices are good for today only. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility here. We can work something out. If uh, we bring the price down a couple thousand, I can talk to them about Let's set up your mic for the very first time. You head over to the System tab, click on Mic Setup. Now this will have popped up when you first ran the app, but in case you missed... Here we go. That's exactly what we Although need. Although GoSLR is not designed to support wireless USB headsets, but we can support the headphone component if you have an auxiliary input on your headset base. So for example, these Astro A50s, I've just pulled up the base here, it does have an aux input, which is a 3.5 millimeter cable. And GoXLR has a 3.5 millimeter headphone out. So you simply connect the cable between the headphone output on GoXLR and the aux input on the A50. And then everything that comes out of your headphone output on GoXLR goes directly to the aux input and gets sent to your wireless headset. That means all of the mute modes or levels or anything like that that you hear within GoXLR or that you've seen in the other videos will work perfectly. There is one caveat that the uh, microphone output will not work uh, because it will not go from the microphone to GoXLR's input. You could theoretically connect the optical out from the headset into the optical in, the, the console, the PlayStation and Xbox input on GoXLR, but it would not run through the EQ, the compressor, the de-esser, the voice effects, or the sampler. Uh, so it doesn't work in that function. If you did happen to have a, a line out on it, or auxiliary out on the uh, headphone amplifier here, if you had one in and one out, you could actually go headphone output from GoXLR to the auxiliary in, and then the line out could go back and come back in as a mic input. And you could do it the same way we do with the USB mics, which is, again, use another one of these 3.5 mil cables to come back in. But I believe that's a less common output mode to have on these uh, USB headsets. So you're going to be able to use the head the headphone part quite easily. The headset is a little bit trickier and less likely. When using a wireless headset, there's a couple of things to take into account. First, when you're connecting the base of your wireless headset, like we talked about, with a 3.5 millimeter cable, you're going to connect from the speaker out or the line out on GoXLR 
into the auxiliary input of that base. And that's going to send your signal from the XLR to the auxiliary input of the wireless headset, and then that's going to send it out to your headphones. You may run into some buzzing while you're doing this. Now, buzzing is generally what's called a ground loop. There is potential difference between two different items in the signal path, and it's creating a buzz. You can buy on the internet for about 10 bucks a ground loop isolator, or people call it a GLI. It's essentially a little transformer in here that gets rid of the buzz. You want to put this thing at what we call the termination end, or at the end of the signal. So your regular 3.5 millimeter goes into GoXLR, and then you go all the way down the cable to where you're going to plug it into your headset base. That cable goes in one side of the GLI. Then it comes usually with a little cable, or it might actually have the cable like built right in and just stick it out. You then plug the other cable into there, and then this is what goes into the base of your headset. And that will reduce ground hum in your system. So anything that's that kind of stuff will be gone. Secondly, with wireless headsets, they themselves have latency, which means it takes time for the wireless signal to travel through the, the transmitter, through the air, to the receiver in your headphones so that you can hear it. That will give you a perceived delay between your speaking and what you hear in your headphones. That is not the cause of GoXLR, but it is rather the cause of the wireless signal having to transmit from the wireless transmitter to the receiver in your headphones. You can easily miss your website losing positions. Stay in the know with the position tracking tool by S. Oh yeah, this is all new. Um, Tarkov, go today or no? I'm just, I'm still setting this up. I, I still plan on doing it. I think I'm gonna restart this thing now. For dedicated Tarkov. Yes, yes. I'm gonna take a little feed. Oh. My take a this needs to fix. So this should fix it. I wanna I want you guys to be able to hear me even when I'm turning my head. But now I'm starting to hear my daughters. Music. Okay. Yeah, that's what he said. That if we have a loud room to increase the threshold, which sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. I don't know. Freaka, thanks for liking the stream. Welcome, welcome, everybody. I think we're just wrapping up here. I think I might just take a, a break, get some food. Then come back with uh, some some actual gameplay. Let's see in between songs. Yep. I just downloaded the Pretzel app, Pretzel Rocks app on a computer too, so we're gonna play around with the stations, find one that we like. All right. I think we're all good. This is definitely going to take um, a lot of... The f you said to me, you little... Xander, I'm not sure much we can do with your name, though. Jake the Snake, mother... You Josh, little what the... You swear. said to me, you little... That's We're going to have a lot of fun with this. Lots and lots of fun with this. I'm, like, feeling on the LXLR where the escape key is. This is really cool though. Keeps on kicking me out of my own channel though. Check, 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 check. Whatever, bro. I think I'm gonna keep it until I get a... Um, where am I going? Right here. Chat. Me all.
right? So I'm gonna do that. We'll be able to hear me. Check, check, check. That you guys will. I just turn this back up every time, which is kind of inconvenient. But at least I have an option to mute my mic the whole, all the time. I guess I got that button. I can just like, that turns everything off. <sighs> we need one of these for like the stream deck. There probably is. What's up guys? What's going on? UFO voice. I like, I like this one. It's like, Josh, welcome to the dark side. We are here. We are going to destroy your human life form. I said, oh. Or if I want to go on to the Max Singer. If I want to be on the Max Singer, um, wait. There it is. There it is. Chat, we are on the mass Singer. <sighs> oh my gosh, dude. I cannot believe he said that to me. My voice. I'm a little sick. That's why I'm getting voted off the island. Sucks. You guys are bitches. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty cool. And Josh, after three months of support, thank you very much for coming back. <laughs> I don't know if you guys watched Stone Mountain, but welcome to the squad. So, yeah, I have a lot of fun with this. I sort of, I'm so pissed off. You said to me, you, you said to me, you. What the f you said to me a little What the f you said to me a little It's so cool. I can just like record it on the touch of a button. I can do it with music too. Turn it up a little bit. What the f say to me a little What the f say to me a little It's I don't know. It's it's amazing, it's awesome. That was my Christmas present, guys. Christmas. We're just setting it up. Because I just got a new mic. Thanks to you guys, by the way. Feed yourself, baby. <laughs> so, thank you guys for all your support. I mean, like all this cool technology, learning a bunch of stuff, just awesome. XLR mic. And we got a mixer. We got a storm deck. We're making a chat. Like I said, it's all because of you guys. You guys have been rocking the last couple of months. The stream transformation is 
you should you should just go back and see just like what we started with it's a i don't know it's truly just revolutionizing all right i think i'm gonna go ahead and end this stream because it's like four hours in and there's like no gaming content to it so i'm gonna take a little break get some food and yeah Daylight like has completely threw me off. I'm glad it happens on Sundays though, because I would not expect it. I was like, I was sleeping in, I'm like, holy crap, it's 10 o'clock? What? I'm like, no, it's just 9 o'clock, bro. Get your ass out of bed. Go stream. Still do these. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm still gonna like mess around with settings and everything, but still, still a lot of fun. For some reason, like every time I like turn my head, though, it like stops. Increase the gain a little bit. Maybe that'll help. Maybe this will help. Or maybe I just need to talk louder. I don't know. I'll keep up messing with it. I gotta remember to save it though. So we're happy with this. It works. Go XLR. It works. Thank you so much for your amazing product. We'll be back, guys. Be useful allowed. Oh, instead of like finding the app for it, let me just go ahead and turn it off. Turn it down with the mixer. Or I can turn it off. Or I can just turn the mic. Or I can turn the mic up. Maybe that'll help when I turn the other way. Turn it down. Find a good medium there. I want to be able to not. Oh, that's right. I still need to do the game audio too. Oh, crap. I hate when this happens. Servers, it's probably you're probably gonna, we're probably gonna have to do it in game. Except for Battle.net, Battle.net's the weird one. I'm glad that they have everything. Um, like everything in the sound settings is something different. You, know, you got the music, the mic, voice chat, and <laughs> hello. Go. Wait, that already works. Check. That shouldn't work. That's what I thought. Yeah. Let's get audios. Crap. Don't do that. How do I get this? What is this? Um. Sound. It's not a game. Let's 
It's kind of okay. I thought it just uses your computer settings. Cool. All right. Well, like I said, I'm gonna take a little break. Looks like it's already set up. So. It doesn't sound like there's a, much of a delay. I guess we'll find out with the uh, running and the footsteps and stuff. So. All right. Yeah, I'll be right back. I'm gonna take a little break, get some food, and we'll go back live. All right, sound good? International Women's Day, by the way. Finally, new title. 